Then I'm not going to commit to some bit, okay? Because God didn't commit to the bit of making the earth. He went out there, he fucked around, and he fixed it as he went. And that's your job tonight. Mold the shit out of clay. Do it wrong first. Then figure out how to do it right. Try to do it right. Don't do it right. Do it wrong again. And for the love of God, ice your knee. Yardage. Yeah. Yardage, 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 yardage. I'm har mental. Oh my God. Okay. It's so nice to be back in our beautiful Los Angeles, California. <laughs> at the glorious Egyptian theater, Temple of the Pharaohs. I've got very good news for you all. Guess what? Harmontown is now in session. Somewhere among you roams a new pharaoh. Won't you please welcome to the stage the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon. Yo, 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 yo. Egyptian pyramid like King Tut. I fucked your mama and her pussy and her butt. I fucked your daddy too. And I nuzzled his nuts. I fucked him all the way across the country on a big bus. I fucked your mama. I fucked your daddy too. I fucked your horse and I turned it to glue. Freestyle rap off the top of my head. I can do it a cappella or to the beat instead. I fucked your mama. I fucked your mama. I fucked your mama, I fucked your mama like a bitch. It was a llama and she spit at me. Spit at her back, I turned her around and I came in a crack. I fucked your mama on her head, fucked your mama in her face, fucked your mama to the moon in outer space, fucked your mama in a freestyle rap so bad, fucked your mama all across this great ass land, fucked your mama on tour and I came home, fucked your mama with a buffalo robe. <laughs> I stole that rhyme from a different song. Welcome back, everybody. It's good to be back here Hello, in everybody. California. It would have been nice to get some asses in these seats, uh, but it's good that some of you could have turned out. We have about 500 Angelinos in the audience. Um, <clears throat> they all paid top dollar, $10 at least. Some people, Jeff, paid more than that. Some people paid for some VIP treatment. Yeah, there was some Kickstarter nonsense going on that I've never quite understood what a, how you do a Kickstarter to make people come to a show. Not nonsense, Jeff. harm nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's 500 people here at least, but Dan has already gone to make a cocktail, which is fantastic. Well, because I, I had to meet, leave mine back there because I'm strapped with all of this equipment. The director of the documentary has put me to work. There's a GoPro camera on my head shooting everybody. Uh, that'll get some beautiful images of, of not you waving, just that light right there. Uh, There's a camera like... on your chest looking up at the camera on your head. Yeah, that's but gonna get mostly... some great shots of that camera. <laughs> but normally, you, you spend so much time... Dan, I mean... You, Dan, you, you eat. I mean, I couldn't do this at home in the bathroom or anything. You spend so much time looking at your feet anyway, there's gonna be a camera shooting camera. It's gonna be like a, like a Bruce Lee Hall of Mirrors going on. It's meta, dude. Do you want me to make you a drink while you address the crowd? Yeah, could you please? Jeez. Jesus Christ, man. I'm a fucking showman. I got shit to do. We got, a, we, got a, we got so much VIP treatment to knock out, but it's, it's good to see so many old friends, too. I mean, like, what? We gotta just, we gotta do this, we gotta do a bullet train version of Harmontown, man. We got some special guests here tonight. We got a good friend that's uh, fresh out of radiation. I wanna talk to him about his balls. And we got, a, we got, we got, an, we got an old hero that we, we, we made closer friends with on the road out there. And, uh, and, and, and we have the Barbara Walters of comedy, uh, who's gonna give me some tips on interviewing. And I think he's got a pretty interesting story. But uh, let's, uh, let's get these jingles out of the way. These are gonna be, so, on the, on the uh, these are gonna be acapella anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, but, I, I don't know any of them. 
on the Kickstarter that, that, that we were selling tickets through, we offered uh, for $250, you could get a jingle uh, uh, written about your name. So uh, the first person to take us up on it was our friend David Butler, who is our accountant. Ah. <laughs> who, as far as we know, paid for these tickets with our money. Right. But also, also, I'll take a hundred seats. Also, I'm 95% sure he didn't know that he was, I think he, because he was like, I, yeah, I got front row seats. Uh, yeah, I, I, saw, I saw him taking a piss in the bathroom and his dick, which is huge. And uh, did, you, did you know about this, David? Right. Did you know you were buying a jingle? Yeah, I was hoping you would pass. You were hoping we wouldn't, yeah, you should have hoped. <laughs> David Butler, our accountant, who, who bought, as far as I was told, he bought, he bought the $250 tickets that comes with the jingle because he couldn't figure out how to get two tickets. Uh, so he, which it is, it's actually, actually hard on there. You have to like dig it because it's a you, Kickstarter You know how to thing. file taxes though, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so he bought the option, so, so, so here's David Butler's jingle. <clears throat> now, these, these can be considered works in progress, and also, if you're not satisfied, you can have your money Yeah, back. this one is the only one that we wrote on the bus, I think. Uh, and it, this is kind of a la the same, the same creative process that brought you Pringles Dick and Chicken Noodle Man and stuff like that. Right. So, well, it, these, yeah, again, we're workshopping these. But David Butler, if you're not satisfied with this, just don't cash the check, right? Like, don't, that's all he has to do. Don't tell him to fuck with our money, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Jeff and I wrote uh, uh, a some, portion of you, you some of this on the bus, it. and then, yeah, I, yeah. I, and then I, I shit it out uh, backstage. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> the, why are you getting close to me for body well, heat? I, 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 well, I, I wasn't sure if you wanted to try to sing I, it. I, 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 I you're not going to be able to read my shorthand, right? You're not oh, going to be able to read no, it. No, okay. no, all right, all right, here we go. It's too, too <clears throat> <neoform. clears throat> the don't laugh. Yeah, but, uh, it's right, a, it's a comedy show. No, 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 okay, okay, I'm sorry. Laugh, but yeah. not to my metronome. That <laughs> The butler did it. David Butler did it. The butler did it in the butt. But when David Butler did it, he regretted and he hit it. So he did it, but we don't know what. And when, when Butler does it, he gets away because it never leaves a single clue. So... When you meet a butler, keep your eyes on all your butts, or David Butler will be doing you. <laughs> Investigators on the scene can never find this butler's nuts and wiener deep in your behind. And when there is no evidence, there is no crime. So the butler does it, but he does no time. The butler did it, David Butler did it, he did it, but we don't know what. It's still going. He didn't use a candlestick, his weapon is a giant dick, his victim is another butt. <laughs> you can have your money back. No, it's right. gonna be good. This shot on this, my shitty VHS camera, it looks like the Lawrence Walk show out there. It looks really nice. Here's a, uh, okay, Th these guys can really have their money back. There's a uh, Jim, 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 uh, what's his name, Spicoli? <laughs> Scampoli. Sta Scampoli. But, is, it, so, is, it, is that you right there? Hi. Wait, hello. Jim Scampoli, Hi, thank Jim. you for your $250. You can Give have it, you can, you can have it back. Yes, I know, you, you emailed and said, I know the thing is for a name, but could you make it for the name of my comedy show, Jim and them? Uh, hilarious for me to stand up here and sing your jingle for your show. <laughs> But the turnabout's fair play. It's a shitty song. So <laughs> Je I literally wrote it while, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Dan had, oh, and backstage, had one hand had a Chick fil A sandwich in it, and the other hand was trying to write this song. Okay. So, okay. There, there would be a background thing. And also, a lot of the melodies are works in progress. Because what I do is I end, up, I end up ripping off, like, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or something. We'll, we'll change it later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You ordered the MP3 upgrade. You're going to get a full studio recording of this. <clears throat> That's a good Kickstarter. So there's going to be a there's going to be a back background track like Jim and them, 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 Jim and them are everywhere. And when they die, no one will care. But they'll be buried side by side with hands clasped tight and heads held high. They're just some friends of a guy named Jim. They don't have much, 
But they've got him. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Jim and them. Let's drink some pee with Jim and them. Jim and them paid for this song. It was supposed to be a name, so they did it wrong. But Jim and them are where it's at. All dogs are boys, all girls are cats. That's all I got. You can have your money back. It's free, Jim. Free, free, free jingle. Can I, can, can I just, just, just because it might look good for the movie and it's totally bullshit and Harmontown's about honesty, but can I get just the middle part of the middle section just to, to when I do this, I start, start clapping when I say, when I point at you and then stand up because we, we can cut from the Jim and them song <laughs> to an audience standing up. Oh, uh, okay. Because it, 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 it really looks like uh, the Ed Sullivan show on here and it's going to okay. be awesome. Okay, so it's, it's bullshit. Do it, do it half-heartedly if you want. If you don't want to do it, then say fuck off. Ready? So start clapping. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, All right. right. It's gonna, All right. It's, God, it's going to be a good movie. Sports Corner! Ah! In Gibson Theater, get your sports on with your host, Dan Harma. He watched the Super Bowl and knows almost everything about it. Sports Corner. So Dan, what a bowl! Yeah, what'd you think? No ordinary bowl, Jeff. Never is this time of year. Now, do, do, how do you feel about the, 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 the city that hosted the uh, that hosted the Super Bowl? How did they do as a city? Well, it's great when the team can be on their home turf. You know, they always gain more confidence from that. Yeah. So you thought the Saints had, had the home field advantage there? Great, great to see, great to see them having the home field advantage right, out there. Yeah. Now you heard about the the, the big uh, the big. Uh, Gaff, you know, with the electri the electricity, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they, these things are going to happen, Jeff. There's a lot of electricity pouring into to, to these stadiums when they, people play, and so someone's going to always, you know, hit the wrong switch or something. Right. So who did you who did you, who did you have your money on going into that game? I was a birds. What was the Ravens? Ravens. <laughs> you got one right. Well, I I was I was I learned this in San Francisco. Oh shit. Uh, I was I was I was thinking Ravens maybe, yeah, but, but you, then I thought maybe 49ers, and then Jeff, it's all about yardage. So I just thought I would, <laughs> I thought I would wait to see which team got more yardage, and then base it on that. Did you know, Jeff, that they were playing on artificial turf? I did know that because it was an indoor dome. Yeah, so the yardage is uh, wider. Yeah, you gain more yardage. Sunlight, sunlight shortens yards. Yeah. 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 So, so I'll, great I'll, ball, great game, amazing the outcome. Who could have predicted it? Not me, certainly nobody. We don't need to repeat it. You don't need to quiz me on it. It's right. not, that's not what Sports Corner is about. Now it's time for an all tennis Australian Open talk. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> wow, some Australian Open, huh, Harmon? Wow, Wimbledon's got nothing on the Australians, Jeff. Why is that? Well, they've got larger. They've got courts that are uh, they're, they're larger. They've got they've got the nets are higher. Uh, people are out there. They want to win. You know, they 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 they, they, they swing the rackets. Actually, and, the the, uh, the the umpire comes out at the beginning, puts a larger net out, and he, he holds the original size net and goes, "That's not a net." Yeah. Yeah. Then, then they bring out the, the Australian net and he goes, "Now that's a net." Yeah. He lets you know. Sports corner sucks. Let's let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's kill it. I knew too much about the Super Bowl because I actually okay, went to well, the bar I, that's and I that's why That's why I went to Australian Open. You don't know shit about tennis. I know, but then I said the courts are longer. I don't know what sports court. I don't know what the joke is anymore. I don't get it. I don't get my own joke anymore. You got too many cameras on your head, I don't man. like sports. I don't know anything about sports. I got a bunch of cameras on my head. Let's just, uh, let's, let's freeform if you shit. could, If you could be good at any sport, if you, like, honestly, like, if you could be good at one physical activity or sport, what would, you, what would be the one thing you'd be awesome at? Does it come at the expense of any, anything else? No, no, you poof and you have it. Okay, it's just an extra thing I get to yeah, do. Yeah, like you, 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 you can hit a baseball farther than anybody, or you're the world's best golfer, or you can scuba dive deeper, or I don't know. No, no, I almost want to say that I, 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 billiards, but then I'd just be one of those billiard dicks. Like, <laughs> like because, well, that's where it would come in handy, because you're like, oh. Some people call me billiards dick. Because <laughs> I got a pocket for a ball. Some people, people call, call me billiards dick, because I live inside a billiards hall. 
Yeah. Oh, I got chops. <laughs> I live inside a place where they play pool, and I fuck your mama all the time. Rhyme. Right. Squeeze a lime? What are yeah, you going to say there? I don't know. I don't care. You've, you've been rapping across this great nation of ours, and you still haven't learned to stop saying south and mouth. Time and, time and rhyme. rhyme. Mama and llama. You know, I don't know. Did, like, I don't know if any of you listened to the podcast as we went across the country. Uh, I felt there was an opportunity there for Dan to really grow as a rapper. And I, I, I think now is the time to test whether or not you have. I, fuck, I, I got good at rapping. You could hear me right around Madison. You could hear me starting to get really good. Yo, yo, yo. Freestyle, freestyle. Off the top of my head, don't know what to say. Fucked your mama in the grass and the hay. Took a pitchfork instead of my dick. Stuck it inside her like a lunatic. She died. I went to prison. Newton invented the prism. Split light into two, three colors. I fucked your mama and then her brother. That's my uncle. No, it's yours. I fucked her. They're both whores. I fucked them left. I fucked them right. I fucked them with toothpaste. Made their teeth bright. I fucked them. I fucked them on their tongue. I fucked them in their mouth. And then I was done. All right. I was done. I, I, I was done. Okay, I was wrong. Thanks, Los Angeles. <laughs> West Coast. <laughs> you fucked a, 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 a woman's brother, and for a moment considered it was your own uncle. Yeah, well, when you fuck as many mamas as I do, like, <laughs> chances are you're fucking one of your own uncles. Gene gene genealogy becomes a, a haze. Uh, like everyone's mama becomes like a silver Prius. You know, it's like the most common thing, just lost in the parking lot. Is well, that guess... mine or? Uh, did, what the, did you guys want this camera? The, uh, Let's just leave that up here. Just throw it to the audience. <laughs> this, is, this is where the documentary crew makes someone in the audience like uh, shoot stuff and, and doesn't give them any money. All right, Harmon, I missed you on the drive home. Holy I, shit. I, I, you all right? Yeah, well, it's just that there's blood coming back to my... <laughs> See, Jesus Christ. In Denver, you blame the altitude, but this is, we're, not, we're not high right now. Yeah, I'm a little high. <laughs> um, all right, Jeff. But I left you for a while, Dan, and I, I had to fly off to Vegas to do a thing, and I, I missed the ride home, the triumphant return. Yeah. Uh, what did I miss? I don't know. What, what you missed? You missed sad goodbyes. Uh, you know, you missed. Did you see Splinter, Sp Splinter's uh, Splinter's blog? I, I saw when he added an L to his name. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. Spencer left this incredibly uh, beautiful, uh, melancholy. Uh, YouTube -y kind of clip and it's wait was he driving during that he kept talking about who's driving but he was looking at the camera I was he likes about... to drive out in Simi Valley he just gets in his car and just drives and he it was uh, it was really um, it was beautiful and it's sadness he's gonna steal the, the documentary we know that yeah he's gonna be yeah, that documentary a... character that everyone's um, gay for <laughs> Ooh, I like that guy he's gonna be on the cover of the DVD with his beard he's bigger than you on our poster I think isn't he like on the, on the... Probably. <laughs> His beard's bigger. Because I didn't learn anything, Jeff. I didn't change out there. You, you, you learned got, nothing from that? I got a little better at rapping. I learned that Spencer's... A little, little bit. I, I, didn't, I, 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 learned, I, learned, I didn't learn... I learned that I'm an abusive boyfriend, but I, I think I already knew that. Like, I, learned, I learned that the fans are great. I learned they're good people. I learned that, 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 that I can do whatever I want, and I, that I don't know what to do with that permission. Uh, to bore people, make them sad. Uh, sometimes gross them out. I, I learned that I smell like an onion. I learned that uh, I learned that uh, I learned that my hemorrhoid comes back quicker if I'm off my diet. Uh, uh, your hemorrhoid came back in uh, Salt Lake City, I believe. Uh, Dan was like like he was walking my around backstage. Came back in Salt Lake City. Uh, yeah. I think th yeah I think it did. Oh, A secret, but it kept peeking out, and I couldn't help but tell everyone. Cause when you got a 
a hemorrhoid. It itches and it bleeds. And it doesn't matter what the audience needs. Just want to be truthful and tell them I got a fucking thing on my ass. <laughs> Howard has been head of the class. <laughs> say it again, I'll say it. Howard has been head of the class. I got a hemorrhoid sticking out of my ass. Toby Keith gonna make some potato skins and grenades. I'm gonna do countries and invade. I'm gonna wave the flag and suck a million balls. Toby Keith gonna ride a tank and get you some fries. Oh, it's me, Toby Keith, surprise. I sang a song for you and I'm jerking it off in the mirror every night. I fuck my mother and I cry when I masturbate. Toby Keith, I'm a big dumb fucking asshole, Toby Keith. <laughs> Easy target. Easy target. No, yeah, we, we came down pretty hard on Toby Keith. He, he, he barely survived the Dixie Chick. Like, 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 he, yeah, he's, he's an easy target. Yeah? Almost lost a fight to a Dixie Chick. Um, okay, let's, let's start bringing some of our uh, people up here. Oh, we got, uh, oh, we got people. We got a roster of A-list people to talk to. I'm trying to think of what order to do them in. I think that the most logical order will be to check in with... I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. I, 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 you are I, off your diet, man. I went off my diet and I'm out of breath by fake line dancing. Like, like. <laughs> how, much, how much weight do you think you gained on the road? Probably like 15, 20 pounds. There was a point where I, we went to In-N-Out and you weren't there. <sighs> From San Francisco to LA, I was like, okay, I gotta go back on the diet when I get to LA. And that's when the shit really hit the fan. The, that's when the shame eating started. Not hungry at all, ever hungry, just eating, just to eat, just because when I got to LA, I was gonna go back on the diet. Went to In N Out, got a double double with some fries, a Neapolitan shake. It's a secret thing Spencer taught me about. Wow. There's all kinds of stuff off the menu. You can get like a, a flying hand job, you can get a, <laughs> a, 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 a reverse chihuahua. It's like, uh, it's just, uh, you, could, you, you could get, you could get a, a, a D D David Blaine's uh, scrotum. That's two pickles yeah. and no, no onions, but three patties, but they're not on a, a bun. They're on three sheets of paper, and uh, there's a cigarette on top. And they're suspended, they're suspended 40 m miles above the earth for... Yeah, for yeah. Six and then years. a bus drives by, and it's got your dead friend's name on it. Uh, it's, it's only four four ninety five. It's a it's a, it's a really a deal. It's pretty great, but it never goes away, uh, and it's slowly uh, just sadder and sadder. Um, the uh, 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 so I so I got the I got the double double on it. The fries were stale. They were too crispy. Okay. Yeah. You follow me? I got you. I went to an adjacent McDonald's. See, here's where it gets shady. <laughs> Here's where it gets movie of the week. The bus had overheated and everyone was watching our bus driver, Jason, fix the engine on the bus. I went to a McDonald's. I, I, I was like, these fries are stale. I'm gonna get some better fries at McDonald's. I went to the McDonald's. <laughs> and they found one of your earlier french fries stuck in, stuck in there just to buy you time. Uh, to, to, to sabotage the engine to go I to McDonald's. I got fries, but I'm not gonna only get fries, so I got a quarter pounder with cheese. And, uh, oh my God. <laughs> and, I, got, and I got another milkshake. And, and, I, and I, 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 put it, I put it all in the bag. Like, I put the milkshake in a bag, so I would just look like I had fries. And, and I, just, I just walked past everybody who was like on a picnic watching the bus get fixed, and I was like, Top of the morning, uh, just, oh, I want to finish off these fries and go to take a nap. And I just went into a bus and hid while I ate like a, like a fucking 16-year-old uh, with, with real problems. But I'm 40, and the real problem is that shit will kill you, man. What am I doing? All right, let's talk about... Uh, uh, Speaking of our next that, guest, <laughs> our next guest is no stranger to uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, diabetes. 
our next guest we kept running into on the road out there, and he's kind of he's an old hero of mine in terms of performance. Not that I don't want that on him, because I'm not I don't have an act, and I'm not. Uh, doing anything that he would want attributed to him as a uh, But when we were in Milwaukee, we saw him uh, uh, do something incredibly inspiring me and Shrab and kind of kind of kind of like to put, he put us past the tipping point of moving to LA. He's uh, you know, he's, 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 he's he was a, he was a master stand-up uh, 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 At one point and then at another point completely reinvented as a as a guy that makes some great uh, uh, indie films. Um, so please welcome our friend, our road dog, our, our strange uh, soulmate, Bob Goldthwaite. I think uh, the mic will just let you have this. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay, there you go. Hello. Check one. Hey, hi, thank hey. you. Hey, how are you? I'm good, I'm uh, good. I, uh, I'd love to take credit for your comedy styling. <laughs> well, you kind of, you, you sometimes, you have a reputation, like there's stories about you doing some insane shit on stage. Like, uh, what was the, what was the story about where you, I, I, please forgive me for not getting the details right. I'm going to sound like, 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 like your dad or something. He, he, lit, he lit Crispin Glover, Glover on fire one time. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Uh, there was another thing was like, you were, op were you opening for, for, for Pearl Jam or what? No, I opened, I opened up for uh, Nirvana. Nirvana, okay, close yeah. enough. First of all, hello everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know, I was sitting here waiting to go on and I started looking up and I was like, I like the theater, it's like, it was like this beautiful old theater and they said, no, we can put some new shit right over that beautiful old architecture and <laughs> take care of that. This is LA. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I opened for Nirvana, yeah, yeah, which uh, people are always surprised, uh, 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 I met Nirvana before they broke, uh, uh, Kurt was a fan of mine and he interviewed me on an Ann Arbor, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, and, and, and a college radio station, he wanted to meet me, I know it, got, it gets really weird and quiet, it's like finding out that, no, it's like, fine here though, that's fine, it, no, it's <laughs> not, no, 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 that's just, it's just fascinating, no, I swear no, to God, like wait, 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 you, you, did you say, Kurt Cobain interviewed you on an Ann Arbor, Michigan radio station? It was a college station, yeah. And wow. He, and, he, and so he, he set up... So he was, he was moonlighting as a college radio DJ during Nirvana? No, but it was funny, because like he, he wanted to meet me, so that's how it was put together. But it was funny, because you know he was quiet and kind of mumbly, and then you know I'm going like... Ah! And so it was uh, really an, an audible interview, you know? But uh, people, when they find that out, it's like finding out that like Jimi Hendrix really liked Buddy Hackett, you know? You know like, they, they, they really can't wrap their brains around it. But yeah, I did about 15 cities opening for Nirvana. But it was, wow. it was uh, a lot of comics. I was like, oh, you know, worried about bombing, but like uh, that, I, that never really bothered me. And, what is that like when you go? You, you're setting, you're being set up to bomb if you're a comic opening for a band. No one's there. Right. To, but I also kind of enjoyed that part of it. Right. So when you when you when you how how did you do overall? Was it usually were they like crowds about, that crowds that big? You can't even hear them laughing, right? Well, <laughs> I can't. it was about every third show ago. Okay, the <laughs> the first show I did was in Chicago right after Michael Jordan had retired from basketball, and and. Uh, Myself and the Nirvanas knew about as much about sports as you do, right. although I didn't even watch the football show yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't really watch it, but I saw the names of the teams, and then someone, someone brought shots over, and then, and then another guy that's in my cell phone came over, and that's always bad news, and I woke up 5 p.m. the next day. I'm sorry to interrupt you, please. No, no, no. <laughs> Look, if, if you're bored with me, I know how these stories end. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not with you. I, this is the story I want to hear, the one oh, that you're seeing no. up. Oh, so it was, uh, it was in Chicago, and it was, uh, it's like 4,000 Nirvana fans, and Michael Jordan had retired from basketball, and I went out. And I wouldn't do this now, because I actually understand that everybody has feelings now. But uh, <laughs> I went out and I said, hey, Chicago, how are you? I feel bad for Michael Jordan, but for $40 million a year, I'd shoot my own dad in the fucking head. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and there was this noise that wasn't even that groan. It was more like, ah! like, uh, <laughs> like, in my mind, when I retell the story, the pit stopped moving. You're like, you know, but, uh, 
I actually got hit with a teenager you? once like, when I was doing the when show. You, when you do something like that, like you're not yeah. you're not sitting backstage. I mean, maybe there's like a there's like five minute period backstage. Or do you see that shit flying off of my <laughs> walrus beard? Um, for you and the podcast audience, there's shit flying off of my beard and mustache that I haven't trimmed for for thirty days. Um, the uh, uh, d d so you're in the wings and you're kind of like maybe in your head you're going like ah, I think I'll do maybe I'll do this. Uh, but are you also thinking about their reaction, or are you thinking like... If I know the truth, and I never told this part of that story, was uh, I actually said that to Kurt as I was walking the stage. I said, $40 million, just shoot my own dad in the fucking head. And then I went out there, and I said it, and he goes, and then afterwards, he goes, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> <laughs> did he, what, what, did he, like, when you said it to him, did he go like, you gotta do that on stage? I, that is a no, no, Kurt no. Cobain impression that I'm working on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you gotta do that that'd be, on the stage, that would be if Bob Kirk, Goldwing. If Kirk Cobain was a horny bear, <laughs> that's what that sounds like. Where's you my do that on stage? <laughs> I want to rub bees on no. my dick. So, uh, no, uh, yeah, so actually I remember when I got off, he was truly like the only one laughing in the venue. <laughs> he was behind an amp. But, uh... Yeah, so, so Have that, you ever gone on stage and told a uh, Kirk, Kirk Cobain blowing his head off joke? Myself? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm kidding, of course. Oh, you mean, oh. Well, I mean, no, I mean, I had a, that, 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 sto that story comes full circle in a terrible way, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, wait a I feel like a bus you go by right now with his name on it. <laughs> to really bum me that out all the way, amazing. Jeff. Hey, look, look now, at me from this angle. Look at me from this angle. <laughs> <laughs> just from that angle. Well, just that specific angle. I think his most amazing power was that <laughs> the amount of women he banged. Oh, man. That's the real David Blaine magic. Um, Somebody told me a story. This is horrible gossip, but what is my show? Quality journalism? <laughs> Somebody told me a story. This is pro It qualifies as an urban legend because a friend told me about the friend. Like, like, so they said he went on like a blind date. Like he got hooked up with a, with a chick and he asked a bunch of information about her, including like information about like some recently deceased like loved one. And then he did that thing on the date. Like he was just, you know, let's get some, let's get some, some pink berry. And then he was like, uh, hey, uh, somebody valuable to you is in my shirt. And kind of like, like, like opened his shirt and had cigarette ash, you know, and it said like Ralph or whatever. Like, like used it as a date thing. Wow. I don't know. All I would've right. went with it in my pants. <laughs> David Blaine, get up here! Let's bring David Blaine out! Oh, uh, he's not here. No, but, um, yeah, I heard David Blaine used to, like, uh, uh, hang out with Leonardo DiCaprio, and when people would come up and say, hey, can I get a picture? David Blaine would just frame out Leonardo DiCaprio's head. <laughs> this is back in the day before digital, so when they got it uh, developed, they would have... Uh, I always thought that was kind of a cock, so I don't have a problem taking David Blaine down a couple knots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it happened to me. <laughs> I love Leo. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, so you're out? Why are you out there on the road? Why did I run into you in my underwear because after yelling I, at my girlfriend in a hotel? Like, yeah, why? That's, I, 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 I was a nice icebreaker. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know why. Like, like, like well, the, you guys were fighting. The, the document. Could you hear us? Oh yeah. You could hear me? Yeah. I think you said you couldn't that night. I heard but. you when I walked in. I, when I came down the hall, I heard you fighting. Oh, fuck me. Um, I mean, that was well, so the documentary crew. It didn't crew. sound like, I, I, I gauged it. I was like, is this 911? Nah, this is just. No, fucking, this is just, they're just whole rehashing sad shit. fucking yeah, like, yeah. codependent. Because the like, people next to us was more, they were more of a dick in the ass. That woman that came out and yelled at us. She had like us, autistic kids or something, yeah. I, it sounded like she was skinning an autistic kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, yeah! <laughs> just, just, I just put my babies to bed. I go, whatever you're calling it, lady. But, uh, remember, she she got she yelled at us for being in the hall. Yeah, yeah, she did. That she was the, that was the outrageous thing. I was yelling at my girlfriend. I was doing my Kevin Kevin Spacey. Uh, I call it my Kevin Spacey. I like the fact that. <laughs> You, a family, an 80s comedian, Bobcat Goldthwait, and I'm the only one not screaming. <laughs> <laughs> why am I the quiet one here? Yeah, why am I the one? Hey, man, if we could all just, you know, be cool, all right? If, if my career has taught you anything, it's shh. <laughs> 
That is hysterical. I had never put that together. Uh, you used to be famous for screaming. Um, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, that, that's a testament to how cool you've become in your recent career. Like, 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 I, I, that's another thing I wanted to ask you about. Like, your, your films, like, your, I, I feel like there must be something you do as a director. This is going to sound like I'm just kissing your ass because you're, you're, you're here, but, but, uh, I, I always wanted to ask you, like, if there's something you do with your actors because I, I don't want to bag on Robin Williams. He's a comedic icon, national treasure, blah, 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 but I, I, I don't. I don't think he'd cry if he heard another person say, "Yeah, I never. He's never really my cup of tea on screen as a dramatic actor." But then your movie, where is it, in that first act where he's he's relating to that kid who eventually autoerotically asphyxiates himself and, and like 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 he. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the first plot point. Like if sorry. you haven't seen it, who cares? <laughs> kid dies jerking off. Uh, father of the year. World's greatest dad. World's greatest goddamn dad. I, this is the third time I've done that. But to what you. is Father of the Year? Is that I, a, that is that must be some movie with? Uh, is that uh, a, it's like Billy Crystal? I or think. Something. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh Jesus! No, that's and Father's Robin Day. Is a, uh, Father's Day. I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, let's make a movie called Father of the Year, so that I stop being wrong about it uh, when I ask you about it. Sequel. It left me a flashback. Oh, I remember before my kid died. It'd be like <laughs> the Muppet Babies of erotic, <laughs> autoerotic fiction. I found Robin Williams like absolutely resonant and relatable and compelling in that movie. Not only is it the first time I liked him in a long time as a dramatic actor, but that is the first time that I've ever seen a story about a dad of a teenage kid. I'm 40 years old now. I, 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 I should have had a kid a long time ago. I'll probably have one at some point. You listening? Uh, the, uh, start I hope you keep yelling at her. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> No, are you kidding me? That's, that That's, makes your eggs drop. Yeah, I'm sure that is. I'm sure that is. We're like cats. Like, it's like the barbed penis. Again, I wasn't nervous for either of your safety, but it's I just, heard you just, the It's just white scene. trash mating dance. That's it all you It was like doing. so played out, your argument. At one point, I heard you go, line. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, just you're off book and you're confusing me. The guy behind me. the curtain, yeah. It's a, you, you know, you, 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 I did you a favor the day I met you. Uh, oh, I did you a favor the day I met you. <laughs> Now you want more? <laughs> but, um... Uh, I will strangle you with this plastic thing that holds six packs together. Okay, You're so, a fish to me. So if we were... Uh, what's, what's, I, do, 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 like, like, just so now, I know. If, we, if you were in a movie with me right now, I'd say, Dan, that was really good. <laughs> um, let's just do it again. And uh, we have mics. <laughs> Everybody can hear you. Just... <laughs> that, is, that is often the note I get from... from... Well, from me, you know? I mean, that's yeah. a, like, I always thought I had to make the craft service people laugh, you know? So I was like, ah, you know, I do still say that I'm a really bad actor. And I, right. I think maybe part of that, if, if people do like the movies I make, you know, you can ask Marin. I just worked with him. I don't know what, if I did anything for him, but... Uh, I'm not going to ask Marin anything. But, he's um, he's going to go... Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, uh, Robin and I have been friends. Mark Maron, everybody. There we go. Mark Maron to the stage. Just come on up. Yeah, let's get him up so, here. Yeah. Mark Maron. Yo, yo, it's Mark Maron. Yo, Mark Maron, why you staring? Is your mama rocking Sharon gonna fuck her like Sharon Stone? I give your mama my bone, and Mark Maron. Mrs. Marin got alone, but not for long when I came to her house. I put my little weenie in her like a shit was a mouse. So when a creepy, creepy, could I get some cheese? My name is Martha Marin. Could I have some more, please? Harmon's dick is gonna make you pregnant. Nothing's gonna rhyme with that. That's the end. Hello, Mark. Hey. Is this fine? Are you whining me? I gotta tell my mom to listen to this. <laughs> I didn't know what. It's gonna be those was. ones I'm gonna tell my mother to listen to. That's very nice. I thought mining was uh, actually putting your penis in the foreground of a photo. Uh, <laughs> that's like a. So there's a lot of motherfucking going on in your raps. I'm I am not. I am not soft on mamas. Well, when I rap. I don't, I, recently, get, I don't get to use the N-word, so I, I just fill the, my styrofoam uh, peanut is, fuck your mama, 
So that's your analogy for the N-word, is your mother? No, I'm just saying, like, if I could use the N-word, wow. my raps would be that's filled with it. That's why he's the master, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bam, right for the... <laughs> boiled it down. Yeah. So your mother's the... <laughs> for the N-word. He's the Barbara Walters of, uh, of, of comics. I'm he's not sure I like that so much. I, I, I... I saw, yeah. that, I saw that written about you, and I thought that was, I, I immediately knew that you would not like that. So I'm, I'm which an, I thought was amazing. I'm an annoying Jewish woman of podcasting? <laughs> See, I All right, I'll take it, I'll take it. I've, I've always saw him as the Dallas Reigns of... <laughs> famous, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only person who didn't get that reference. Uh, famous, uh, famous orange weatherman from California. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to think Good job on getting mind. the mic, that only took a few minutes. Um... <laughs> I, I, I leaned over and I, I, uh, I, I went like, uh, I gave a couple of hands. No, it feels better now. I, I yeah, appreciate it. For a while, that was wow. You want to know about Bob's directing style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He directed uh, four episodes of my show. And what, which, is, which I saw the pilot for and which I'm really looking Yeah, we talked to. about it. It's great. What Bob will do is like, he'll let you run the scene and everybody will, uh, you know, will do the lines and everything. And then what he would do with me is he'd come over and he'd sort of pull me aside and he goes, don't listen to what anyone else is saying. Okay, just, just you know, do what you want to do, and I'm going to be over there. <laughs> <laughs> then you hear a car is start. It, is that right? Is that? That's fair, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I spend most of my time when I'm directing trying to find a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Talked to me by the great Richard Donner, actually. I was in uh, Scrooge that he directed in A Tales from the Crypt. And he's like, kid, you want to learn how to direct? I go, yeah. And he goes, come in my trailer. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not falling for that again. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> and so he says, he just throws me a pillow and he goes, take a lot of naps. It's a true story. I go, really? And, then and that, that's why he got fired up as Superman, too. Yeah. That's what I was told writers, like young writers are, do you have any advice for young writers? I'm like, well, you're, you're, go take a nap. Like, you're young. You're like, don't, don't wake <laughs> yeah. up until the pressure's on. Sit up gonna... the, you sit at the computer and you look at the screen until you go, fuck! <laughs> and then you jerk off. Yeah. And then you take a nap. Yeah. Isn't that writing? I mean, am I misunderstanding it? Get as, get as short a deadline as you possibly can from anyone that's willing to pay you for anything because if they give you nine months, you will, you will find out what happens to your body if you masturbate for eight months and three weeks. <laughs> you, will, you will see a penis score. God, I, I passed that line 20 years ago. <laughs> that's a, all this is explained to you in the WGA uh, Guild books. <laughs> Just a bunch, I, of, a bunch of photos of, of writer's dicks. A bunch of photos of writer's dicks. Do you want me to, um... A mac and cheese on the stove. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to step on, on anything, but I, I talked to you b before uh, the show, and, I, and I've got this story that is such a classic show business story yeah, yeah, that I've been gifted this. with. Yeah, yeah. I never expected this to happen in my life. And, and, and I've got, a, like, like a classic show business story. I think this is the place to do it, if anyone here wants to hear in the Egyptian exactly. theater a classic. Because it also, it also addresses your question about interviewing, because this was, this is, it all comes around to this. By the way, this is what I want. I brought Mark Marin here because I wanted to, uh, well, trick people into buying tickets, but also <laughs> I wanted to ask him, because I just finished his podcast tour, like, I'm, I'm a terrible interviewer. This is, like, my weakest skill, right, Chef? After rap. Yeah. I think he's excellent at rap. He is, excellent. He, he is he's all right. Yeah. yeah. Interviewing is no easy task. Gonna fuck your mama so hard. Right. Pussy okay. needs all a right. flask. All right. <laughs> he, he was what I do. What I do. Uh, I was gonna, yeah, the, the thing was gonna be, I was gonna ask Marin, how do you, how do you interview people? Right, well, here's, here's As what, the Barbara Walters of, of comedians. Well, I don't know about that, but here's what happens. So I get an opportunity to, to interview Mel Brooks, okay? Now, right, it went, it went up today, and if you listen to it, you heard half of this story. You haven't heard the whole story. So now Mel Brooks, there's nothing he hasn't said publicly about his life that he has worked into a shtick and that he's gotten laughs with. It's all out there. I did research. I watched all the old Dick Cavett shows. I watched the new Dick Cavett interview. I watched him interview, uh, interviewed by some English guy. I listened to a whole episode of The Nerdist. All right, that's how far I went. <laughs> wow. And... And I, and I say that with love and a slight bit of resentment and contempt. Um, that's the triangle for me. That's the, uh, the triad. So my, my 
problem was, how am I going to talk to Mel Brooks and get something out of him that he hasn't said before and, and really connect with him as a person? So I realized going in, this would be the advice. I don't know if you can take this advice. My first thought was like, I'm a Jew. Woo! Sorry. I'm a Jew. Welcome he's to the a, Egyptian. He's a Jew. <laughs> yeah, we used to... Uh, we, this we place did is a, beautiful. No, we did a lot of work for them. We did a lot of work for them. We're, we're, yeah, some of the, the greatest Jewish artifacts are Egyptian. We're going to put you in a basket in a river after the show. That would be fine. I hope that his mother finds me. <laughs> um, so I can fuck her. The, uh, boom, huh? West side. All right, so I figure I'll just go full Jew with Mel. That's why I just, I, and literally, I got in there and within five minutes, I'm talking like this. What, are you kidding me? Of course, you know. New podcast, Full Jew with Mel. Full Jew with Mel. <laughs> but, but I've seen that happen to you when we had Kindler on the show. <laughs> I have a sort of... I was so like, yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. They just grow out. Oh, that was a good moment on the show. That was fucking hilarious. Judd Hirsch plays my dad. My dad's a bipolar lunatic, all right? So they get Judd Hirsch to play him, and my concern was Judd Hirsch is a little too, hey, how are you? I'm cute. Wait, you, know, so, you, you replaced what's his name with Judd Hirsch? Well, he couldn't do it. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Cool. Judd Hirsch is that He's great. great. He's a great actor, right? But my, my fear was like, he'd be too cute and too Jewy and not scary enough to be my father, right? So he gets there on the first day of shooting, and he's doing his Judd Hirsch thing, like, hey, I'm here. What are we doing? <laughs> and, and all you guys were sitting there behind the, counter, behind the camera going, oh, he's doing it. Uh-oh. Oh boy, and Independence I, Day. Right, and then there was that moment where I'm like, he's an actor, go tell him to be scary. And then you went over there and I think you said, John, can you turn down the Jew a little bit? <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> yes. Can you, can you, could you just leaven it one quarter inch? <laughs> could, you just, could you just snip a little bit off the end of it? Or snip less, right? I don't know, that always confuses uh, me. No, because I always, uh, I, I, what do I say about this? He, he was great, by the way. Oh, you know, my favorite part of that was we got done with that episode, and you go, and Mary goes, um, I think my, I think my real dad's gonna sue me. <laughs> and I go, he should. <laughs> that may happen. All right, Mel Brooks, yeah, I, I, don't know, I, I don't want to take up all your time, but I gotta tell this story. Full Jew, full Jew. So I talked to Mel Brooks. I'm talking to him. We're getting along. We're hitting it off. There's a couple of great moments in the podcast. One that is not on, is not actually on the podcast. Mel Brooks looks at me and goes, I'm going to give you something exclusive. And I'm like, fucking great. He goes, I'm at the Fox Commissary. I see Gene Wilder sitting with a, a, a legal pad. And I walk up to him and go, what are you writing, Gene? He goes, Young Frankenstein. It's an outline for a movie. And Mel Brooks says, he says, I said to Gene, I said, we're going to do that movie. And Gene said, you got to get me out here. And Mel Brooks said, I'll get you out here. And Gene says, I, gotta, I want a cottage at that. Uh, and then Mel Brooks goes, what the, what, is, what the hell is that hotel? What's that hotel? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know that it's a hotel. It's in Bel Air. It's a hotel. <laughs> and I go, you Beverly Hills Hotel? He goes, no, it's in Bel Air. Hold on a minute. I'll get it. And then he stands up and he goes to the door where his assistant is. He goes, what is that hotel? It's in Bel Air. It's on that street. What is it called? And I hear the assistant go, I don't, I don't know. He's like, look it up on the thing. All right, so, so I hear her clicking away. And she's, uh, he goes, it's in Bel Air. And she goes, is it the Bel Air Hotel? That's it, the Bel Air Hotel. Wow. And he comes in, he sits down, he wants a room at the Bel Air Hotel, he wants a supply of Earl Grey tea and a supply of digestive biscuits. And then I'm like, yeah, and he goes, that's the whole thing. All right. <laughs> it's, it's huge, it's beautiful. It's just, he got that out of Mel yeah. Brooks. Yeah, yeah that's right. amazing. He's a master. All right, so, so here's what happens. Here's what happens. So I do this whole interview and Mel, so he takes a liking to me and he says, you know, you should be doing a talk show on television. And I'm like, great, make some calls, let's make it happen. I want a cottage. Right, yeah, at that hotel. What's it's it? in Bel Air. I need red zinc. <laughs> What's at that? It's behind the bar. It's at the Marmont. It's, right. a, it's a bungalow. What's yeah. it called? Yeah, so he, uh, he then goes, you got to talk to Carl. You got to talk to Carl Reiner. And I'm like, that'd be great. He goes, I'll set up for you. I'll call Carl Reiner. It'll be great. And I go, how is Carl Reiner? And Mel goes, he's about 80%. All right. <laughs> 
hold on, hold on. This that's, is great. That's okay. awesome. So then, so then Mel goes, you know what, I'm going to walk you out. And I'm at Culver, I'm on the second floor in, a, in an office building, Culver Studios. So I walk outside, we walk down the hall, I go, thank you, Mel, and I got my boom and my bag and everything. He goes, you know what, I'll walk you down. So then we walk down, and I go, all right, well, it was great, Mr. Books. He goes, I'm going to walk you outside. So we walk outside, and we're standing outside, I go, well, thank you again. He goes, where's your car? <laughs> And I go, it's in the parking lot. I say, yeah, I'll walk you to your car. So I'm walking with it's Mel King Brooks. Here. Right. I'm walking with <laughs> exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, Except Mel it's Brooks. Hilarious. <laughs> I will, you would love him to be here. So then we walk to the parking lot. He goes, which car is it? And I go, it's, it's, it's a camera. He goes, and he points at a Bentley. He goes, oh, I thought this was it. Why did I walk you out here? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, which camera? I go, it's that one. And I walk over to the car. I'm like, thank you, Mel Brooks and Mr. Brooks. And he goes, no, I'm going to watch you put your stuff in your car. <laughs> <laughs> so I put the stuff in the car, and he goes, you should have a talk show. And I'm like, make those calls. He goes, you talk to Carl, right? All right. <laughs> so he sets up Carl. So I go to Carl's house. There's a whole other series. There's a whole other Jewish experience. <laughs> I go to Carl's house. I'm greeted by his nephew and manager, George Shapiro, who's in his 70s. All right, Carl <laughs> is going to be 91. <laughs> He's so like, George these kids. Yeah, right. George Shapiro comes. He greets me. He talks about Seinfeld for five minutes. There's a publicist there. There's a, a chair, a couch. And then Carl comes down. And he sits in a chair. And I mic him up with the boom, right? And we start talking. Right? And I say, so you, you, you and Mel hang out every night? I heard he says, he comes over here every night, we hang out. I'm like, what do you do? He goes, it has to do with chicken feathers. Maybe I'll tell you. Fine. <laughs> so I'm sitting there talking to Carl for like an hour. While I'm talking to Carl, George Shapiro is in a, in a chair directly across from us. The entire time, he's in and out of this. <laughs> but when I finish the interview, Shapiro's the first one to get up and go, God, that was great. That was a great interview. <laughs> All right. A couple of things happen, real quick. Now I'm getting to the punchline. Uh, it's, it's, we're, 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 I, you're doing fine. In the, middle, in the middle of the interview, he says, did you see that show on PBS about the Jews in the Broadway musicals? The, how many Jews were involved in Broadway musicals? I go, I didn't see it. He goes, I never knew there were so many Jews involved in Broadway musicals. There's a whole list at the end. You got to see it. I'll show it to you after the interview. <laughs> I'm like, fine. <laughs> So we finish his fucking interview. I went talk to him for like an hour and 15 minutes. And then he starts, he says, I'm going to show you the thing. He starts playing with remote controls to find the thing on the TiVo, right? George Shapiro goes, is there ice cream? All right. <laughs> Shapiro goes, and he gets a box of ice cream sandwiches. And he hands everyone an ice cream sandwich. So now, now we're eating ice cream sandwiches. Carl is figuring out the TiVo. I, I want to be Jewish. Huh? <laughs> I want to be 90. <laughs> so he's, he's, he finally figures the TiVo out, and he starts the documentary at the beginning. So I'm sitting there with an ice cream sandwich thinking, am I going to have to sit here for a fucking hour and watch the whole thing? I mean, it's familiar to me, but it's also a little peculiar, right? So we're watching that, and, and I'm just sitting there, and uh, we're eating the ice cream. And yeah, and I'm like, yeah, George Gershwin, and we're talking. And then the phone rings, and I see Carl pick it up, and I'm putting my shit away. And he goes, Hello? Yes, it was great. It went very well. Yes. And he holds the phone out. And, and he looks at me. He goes, it's Mel. <laughs> so I pick up the phone. I go, hello? And all I hear is 80%, right? <laughs> <laughs> the butler did it. David Butler did it. He did it better than the butler. And, and then I said to Carl, you know, I said, I said to Mel, I said, maybe 85. And he goes, all right, maybe 85. <laughs> Put Carl back on the microphone. So then... <laughs> on the microphone? Yeah. And then, then, then Carl hangs up the phone. They talk about chicken for a few minutes. They can't hear, so they have a microphone yeah, on right. the telephone. You know, yeah, I think he was just being cute. So then I forget that, like, I forget to ask him about the feathers. So I go, what, what's the chicken feathers with you and Mel? What is that about? He goes, all right, you want to know? And I go, yeah. And he, he points at the publicist who's on the couch. He goes, you got a pillow behind you? Does it feel, can you feel any? Just give me the pillow. So this guy hands, Mel the, uh, hands Carl the pillow, and Carl's sitting down. He puts the pillow on his lap yeah. and very delicately starts running his hand over this pillow like this. And then he goes, ooh, and he pulls a feather out of the pillow, right? And like a down feather, you know? And he puts it, and he very delicately puts it on the armrest. And he says, I put these in a bag. I've got a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, and, and he goes, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I got a lot of them. 
And then he starts running his hand over the pillow again. I go, what's this have to do with you sitting here for hours with Mel Brooks? He goes, this is what we do. <laughs> Mark Maron, everybody. Eh? That was, I, I knew something called The Full Jew. Yeah, The Full Jew. Hilarious. A new segment. We're gonna bring Marin back every week and do the full Jew if he can if he can stay in with these guys. Are you kidding? I could do that any night of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think we got a sneak hint of it, uh, but I did want to ask: Is there anything specific that you said, Bob, to Robin Williams on that set that tr resulted in me going, "Holy shit, that guy's me!" Instead of the guy from Hook, instead of the guy from Mrs. Doubtfire. Like, yeah, I, I pulled him aside and I said, uh, don't be so Jewy. <laughs> that's what I say to every actor. Whoa, okay, 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 Bobby. Jew okay. it down. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how he talks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, he goes, uh, Mr. Goldberg. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, oh, very good, very good. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. Stop. Oh, Do it. Stop it. I go in and talk. Don't you be guys, afraid. Don't be afraid. I go to so stand up like this now. Close. Like this. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Both yeah. of you can fucking cram it. Here's how it goes. Uh -oh. <laughs> dueling, dueling Williamses. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Drop it. <laughs> Bob can't go up to it, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that seems like a good exit for both of you. Bobcat Goldthwait and Mark Merritt yeah. came to Harmontown. Thank you. I'm sorry I smell like an onion. Now you do too. So awesome. That was wonderful. That was beautiful. I don't know. Mm, Mr. Happy. This isn't a cup, it's a hat. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Mm. Oh, so many people out there. <laughs> oh, so, so I feel like my, my dick could, could, could fuck everyone. <laughs> oh, oh. See, I can't, I can't do it. He's magic. Can we get Spencer Critton into the stage, please? Spencer! Dungeon master to the stars. Storyteller extraordinaire. He approaches the stage, clad in red flannel. His beard is both inviting and repellent. He is the master of all worlds, inhabitant of none. Spencer Crintendins and Friend. His name was improvised by Chevy Chase. Spencer Crintendins and Friend. Hey Spencer, welcome back to Los Angeles, man. By if, the way, Chip, Chip, I'm sorry, Chip, Chip, uh, what a fucking fine. asshole move that was. <laughs> Rewind, edit that out, say that again, and go. Spencer, welcome back to Los Angeles. It's, it's good you to You know what I love back. about cookies? <laughs> a booyah, booyah, everybody, booyah. A booyah, booyah rap, special booyah rap. Got a booyah rap about the word booyah. Now I'm gonna tell you about how to cool ya, booyah. <laughs> All right. All right, so do it again, do it again, do it again. For real, I won't do it again. Spencer, uh, it's great to see you back in Los Angeles, man. It's good to be back in Los Angeles. What can I say? Yeah. Although, you're from, uh, what, Moore Park, Simi Valley? Somewhere? Yeah, Moore Park. I, I'm adjacent to Simi Valley. So you, you don't really call Los Angeles, like, or Hollywood home. This is the, you, you're a, a visitor here, more or less, aren't you? When I'm explaining to people who don't live in Los Angeles, I say I live outside of Los Angeles. That's about it. That's not even a joke. <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's my life. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wait, it's, ever, it's, really, it's really staying Jewy up here. Uh, it's fine. That's good. Spencer, uh, they're uh, good people. Har they're a chosen people. Har Harmon said that he's learned nothing from this tour that we did. Did you learn anything? I learned. Uh, yeah, I learned that I'm I'm, I'm apparently pretty great. <laughs> People like you. I agree. Yeah. I they kept, like you just the way you are. I kept telling them not to, but it didn't stop them. So you are a contrarian by nature. Yeah, it sucks. You said you explained to me you uh, you uh, you know like you constantly 
try to offset the, the, the weight of whatever the universe is dealing you, kind of, I'm paraphrasing you. you, you disagree with things for the sake of it, kind of, because you find that that often is needed. Yeah, it's like, um, if there's too many people saying a thing, I'm like, well, they must be wrong. Right, they have to be. Yeah. And I agree with that. But the dilemma is, the world saying they love you. Yeah. Gets complicated. Because they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> on one hand, they must be, in your view, but yeah. on the other hand, they outnumber you greatly. Do you think that you made any, like, online or in-person foes or enemies during this trip? Did you ever actually piss anybody off or rub anybody the wrong way? I, I don't, I hope not. I don't think so. I, I tried my hardest not to do that. Yeah. Do you think you went on a journey? You're, you're probably familiar by now with my hacky story model. <laughs> like, you're a dungeon master, you're a writer, you're a storyteller. Like, you know that I draw this circle and that I yeah. wrap all the, everything around. around it and follows these eight steps. <laughs> it's all stolen from Joseph Campbell's and field and stuff. And, uh, like, did you see yourself? Did you, do you think that you went on a little journey? I mean, I didn't go, like, placing myself around the wheel, but yeah, it was definitely a journey. I learned some stuff. I returned, uh, hopefully, a better person. What do you think changed about you? What's just, different in your head? I think that before I was really afraid of social interaction, but, you know, when you're friggin' talking to, uh, like, uh, like, 30 people who are mostly wasted in, like, a bar, <laughs> like, 20 times, you know, in a row. Yeah. You, that's the worst. So everything else, <laughs> anything That's else, as bad is, as it gets. Yeah. So like literally, I was I was coming home and I was like, my friends wanted to hang out and I was like, uh, two people. That's workable. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I hear our thousand dollar VIPs down here uh, talking about their character sheets. They're we discussing D and D strategies. We have, we, have two, we have two people. Uh, uh, Wait, for a thousand bucks, you get up on stage and play D and D? Yeah, that's fucking it's Spencer. Spencer is a rock star. What? Nobody would have paid a thousand dollars just to get up here. Mark Mark Marin only did it because he wants to plug his IFC show. You know. <laughs> All right, yeah, the new show Marin uh, starts in May. No, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I, also, uh, I, 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 he didn't really do it to plug it. But, I, but, also, but, and, and but also, I did see the pilot, and it is, I think he's got a straight shot at it. And Bobcat, we didn't plug it. it. We're not really a pluggy show, but Bobcat's new film is God Bless America, right? Yeah, go check that out. Also, shit, we should have talked to him about his uh, his Bigfoot movie too. Uh, 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 you showed me, the, tried to show me the trailer for it after I uh, abused my girlfriend and came to your hotel room and. You offered me your pizza and tried to show me your trailer on the shitty Wi-Fi at the hotel. Uh, but anyways, just 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 Google Bob Goldthwait. What's your... Do, do you relax. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the goddamn 50s. Just uh, go out there and consume his work. He's out there working for you. Assholes. <laughs> Terrible people. It's fitting that this place is called the Egyptian. You're, 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 you're a bunch of tyrants. Pharaohs. This is the dark point of the show. This is where it fits into the story circle. This is the atonement. I hate you. I hate Jesus. I hate my father. I am my father. Jesus is my father. <laughs> you in the podcast, I'm, I'm, I'm ripping open my shirt. There's blood everywhere, bleeding out of my nipples. I'm, p I'm pissing into a jar. There's a there's a there's a, a dreidel in it. <laughs> there's a bull whip up my ass. It's... Now, oh whoo! Resurrection. Now we're back. Let's have some fun. Uh, you, you you What was I? How was I derailing? When you, I got excited about something, that's why I was derailing you guys. You came up and you sat down and then you. God damn it! He was I'll... just asking me how I was doing. That's like it was a big deal. I know, but I thought of something for some reason. I thought of something so important. Otherwise, I wouldn't do that. You said your, your story circle about him changing. Yeah, that was anybody. <laughs> Chevy what? Chase. You you were. About... Oh, Chevy called me back. That's what all. That's oh, all. Oh, was. oh 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? Impeccable timing as always. <laughs> Adam Goldberg has just stormed the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to 3% applause, Adam. More than I deserve. This ain't nerd milk. This is a fucking, this is a, this is a theater full of adults. These people, these people paid good money to be here instead of their typical uh, bad money. But... What brings you up here, Adam Goldberg? Dan has come what, home having your mind? changed. Huh? Dan has changed and reached the apex of the story circle because 
Before we got derailed, he was doing an excellent interview with Spencer. Oh, damn. And that's it. And you, you lent me this. Big Red left a note uh, that I didn't read. But <laughs> this is Does anybody have any idea what's fucking currently happening on this? Uh... He gave we, him a thing. Adam, uh, we, we went away for a while, and uh, we all changed. Uh, but apparently, you're just going to come storm the goddamn stage. Yeah. And do some abstruse bullshit. The what thing about Adam Goldberg is, this is, this is something, this is a typical example. There's too much information per second, right? <laughs> he just returned my copy of The Master. There's a note from Big Red. Like, if I had to, like, I'm so, uh, looking at it through Bob Goldthwaite's eyes, what the fuck is going on? Right. How, and uh, what, what would I need to do to explain to Bob Goldthwaite what is happening? I would need to extrapolate that I borrowed him my, uh, lent him my master DVD, blah, 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 blah. And then you get into who is Adam Goldberg. Well, should, let's, should, let's talk about should Adam we Goldberg. Get, should we get Mark Maron up to do the full Jew with Adam Goldberg right now? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I think Maron might have boned out. Yeah, well, if, if, if he hasn't, go, run. Yeah, run. get out of here, Maron. You got, you got bigger fish to fry. You are the Barbara Walters of, uh, of everything. <laughs> uh, the uh, Goldberg, we met your brothers in Somerville, yeah. Massachusetts. All right. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I can't imagine any of you would be coming here for the first time, uh, but, but uh, Adam Goldberg is our Hamburglar. <laughs> He is, he is that part of the mythology that, 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 that strengthens the mythology by his covetous, like, desire for it. Yeah. Like, Daffy Duck wants that pearl. Mine, mine, mine. And the clamshell slowly closes on him. Like, and you, your heart bleeds for him. You love to hate him. Like, the Hamburglar, he loves hamburgers. But he never gets the Fruity Pebbles. He never gets the Fruity Pebbles because he's the Hamburglar. <laughs> If he got him, he wouldn't know what to do with him. Uh, and, uh, and Adam loves stage time. So the people in Los Angeles who are trained to be restrained uh, uh, be, uh, be, because their star fucker muscle is strained. Boom, ba-doom, ba-doom. I was, uh, uh, um, the, the, no, go with that. I want to know what the star fucker muscle is. The, 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 the people in Los Angeles, they know star fucker. Yeah. Star fucker. When you live in LA, you, you learn if David Duchovny's behind you, don't turn. Oh. Don't look at him. He's a living ghost. So oh. what? He was on X Files. Who gives a fuck? It's the coast. You came out here to work and be creative. True. So who the fuck cares if there's famous people? Eat your potatoes. <laughs> that's that's the star fucker muscle is 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 is, is withered here. Uh, Goldthwait was was applauding. I guess they're like, now now I'm obsessed. Like I'm doing a show to. Uh, the uh, no, but but, but so here, this is my theory about you, having been to Somerville, and also looking on the forums where you proudly proclaim, I, uh, you know, people in most a, viewed thread, in a thread, like everyone's like, I love Adam Goldberg electronically. <laughs> the people in Los Angeles pretty much they roundly like, like they don't like you, they don't want you're not a hero to them because <laughs> I took their hamburgers. Because you took, because you, you, because you, there was a plate of hamburgers out. Ronald put it out there. There's a rainbow. There's fries dancing around. It's a magical world where supposedly anyone can have anything they want because there's no crime. And then to you, then to, to them, there, you represent the, yeah, it's like, oh shit. If, and then, so then I think they go, hey, I want to get up on stage too, but I don't. Fuck this guy. That's what I think they think. <laughs> wow. Bullseye. Bob Goldthwait's back on stage, everybody. <laughs> I'm uh, Mary McCheese. Wait, wait. No, 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 you're done. It's, it's Bob, oh, what's what's it? You're done. I'm retiring. What's yeah. happening? I'm retiring. I'm retiring as a character from Harmontown. Bob Goldthwait just bounced Adam Goldberg off stage. Okay, thanks for coming. <laughs> that was great. Is he bounced it? <laughs> Bob Goldthwait. World's most famous bouncer! <laughs> Boy, can, can you come every Monday to Meltdown? <laughs> that was the best. I know, I mean, it's not, now, I, but that, so here's what happened in summer. Though. If I'm ever a beloved comedian in my, uh, you know, as, like down the road, like, I'm just gonna go to other people's shows and just shoo people off the stage. 
like the Sandman at the yeah. Apollo. Like, yeah. uh, the, in Somerville, Adam's brothers, his elder twin brothers, came up on stage, and they immediately revealed. Adam is the product of an abusive past, as we all are. Also, but, as I certainly am. But more, just real quickly, they were uh, twin brothers, and you called one of them fat. Well, they were they were identical twin brothers, and one of them looked more like Jimmy Kimmel than the other. <laughs> so I accidentally, by pointing that out, like like, so you guys are genetically identical, but and then I realized. What you're saying is we've done a twin study in fatness. And, uh, yeah, I just eat more. My name's Gary. Uh, anyways, they revealed, you know, they, they said, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're mean to Adam. We would, he was the young kid and we were twin older brothers. We would go in his crib and we would pick up his little Goldberg body and we would throw him and play catch with him and we weren't always good at it. And, uh, you know, like sloth from the Goonies comes to mind and all kinds of... Horrible, you know, some of the Temple Grandins and Dan Harmons and tigers and bears. Oh my! Like, like, like abusive past. You immediately, I, I went, holy shit! Adam Goldberg is the victim. I, I imagine you would find that out. Like, like I knew if I met his old brothers. But then the amazing thing is Adam Goldberg, who not not just the Hamburglar, but sometimes when provoked, when cornered becomes the Lex Luthor to my Superman. <laughs> he started, if you listen to that episode, he started texting and emailing or what, something happened. Like, and it was like, we weren't even podcasting live, but Adam Goldberg was like broadcasting messages. <laughs> like, Superman, if you could hear this sound. It's like, it like, ask Dan Harmon what he thinks about this and what he thinks about that. And it was like, like remotely like, like, like controlling the show. And uh, one of the text messages that he wrote was read, I think, by Aaron McGaffey. And then Aaron on the bus got an email from An A Adam Goldberg that was all about how, like, like, oh, my privacy has been compromised, and like, don't be an asshole, like, like to me, like, like, like I, I, have a, you know, I should, like, I, I wrote that with an expectation of privacy. It was very, very fascinating stuff. But I'm more fascinated with Adam Goldberg than anybody else in the room. Okay, so let's move on. <laughs> that's why, that's why Bob came up as Mary McCheese. But, uh, all right. Dear Dan Harmon and Jeff Davis, Adam writes, do we want to read this on stage or not? Wait, no? is this, oh no, isn't that from Big Red? That's a letter. Oh, it's Big Red. Uh, it's a letter from Big Red. Yeah, it's a guy who came on our show once and we never saw him again. We, 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 there was, there was a we assumed that Adam killed him because he was. I'm so sorry I could not make it to your homecoming. I recently, I was recently knighted by the Queen of England and must, okay. Oh, Jesus, Big Red. All right. You lost it, Big Red. You turned out to... Jesus. No, I'm sure it's good. <laughs> How was the master? <laughs> it was... It, <laughs> for the first 20 minutes of that movie, I couldn't wait for it to be over so I could go tell everyone I just saw the best movie of my life. And then for the last 80 to 600 minutes of it, I was like, eh, okay. Uh, uh, kind of riding this porpoise to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, uh, ocean depth in that metaphor is movie quality. <laughs> and porpoises, porpoises are, are, are deep sea animals. <laughs> yeah. Or not, or... Look, I, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a metaphorologist. I, uh, I'm just a guy that wandered into a fucking movie. But, but Joaquin Phoenix, fucking, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, uh, fake Jack Black, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, amazing, amazing. Like, 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 like the, 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 I mean, you know, see the movie for, uh, Jesus Christ, some actors, holy shit. Jesus. Well, let's, damn let's, Christ, Jesus fucking Christ, Jack. Take it easy. Jesus fucking Christ, Joaquin Phoenix, so fucking good. <laughs> let's meet our thousand dollar D&D people, shall we? Uh, what, what are you, wait, wait. No, no? We got another guest. We do. Dude, his ball got cancer. He just came out of radiation. He David Blaine, out. everybody. Welcome David Blaine to the stage. Now, who is it? It's our very good friend, uh, my podcast buddy, who I, I, I the, the ratio of how much time I've spent with him to how much I love him is, is more concentrated than any human being I know. Get jealous. Feel the jealousy, embrace the jealousy when you watch me make mad verbal love to Duncan Trussell. Duncan yeah. Trussell. Yeah, Duncan Trussell. Yeah, gonna have a drunken tussle with 
Duncan Tussle, my name is Russell, Russell, Russell Simmons gonna give it. Little Gibbons got a cancer in my ball, gonna talk about it. Got some radiation, radiation, radiation. Just got out of radiation for his nut. Hello, Duncan. Hi. Duncan Tussle, everybody. Hi, hey, buddy. Hi. Hey. Man, you're a good rapper. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Pull those down a little bit so people can see you. Oh, uh, pull them down yeah. so people can see us? Yeah, get down there soon. All right. There you are. Mom. For these people over here. Great. Hi. Duncan has an amazing podcast that everyone should listen to. I was a guest on it. I listened to that episode. Uh, <laughs> and loved it. <laughs> and love you. We had a big love talk about robots and the future of sperm and oh yeah man we got into the singularity and i we really hit you know that wall you hit sometimes where you run out of words and you're just sort of stumbling around that's my favorite place to get to we definitely got it's a place there. called love i love you i love you <laughs> <laughs> and we vowed to be best friends yeah. uh, on that podcast but we don't really hang out but you know, you locked yourself in the bathroom when I came over. And oh, yeah, you saved me. That's right. I forgot. That was such a humiliating but awesome moment. I did what I could. I locked myself in my bathroom at my house. I was taking a, a dump. Forgive me for saying that. And I, uh, I live in this old house, and it just, the door just locked. It just, like, Amityville horror style locked. <laughs> And it's the mid it's summer. It was summer and it was so hot in there and I started hearing the narrator from those death shows in my head. Like <laughs> he didn't realize this would be the last <laughs> dump he ever took in his life. They found him two weeks later. Were you like calling him. out the window to neighbors? Yeah, I, that's how I ended up. That's the really What do you say when you're locked in your bathroom? What do you call out of the window? Do you say help? Or is that too much? Like I, I, would, imagine, I would go, that's too much. Like I don't want him to think I'm on fire. I'll live. I'm alone! <laughs> I live alone and I'm alone! I'm, this, is a, this is something that happens to geriatrics. It's like that's an elderly death. Uh. I, that's where the cat chews your face off style. I'm 12 years older than my girlfriend, and uh, we were we saw a billboard for the uh, for the life alert thing. And by the way, their slogan is "I've fallen and I can't get up," and it's trademarked now, <laughs> which is like a weird thing because that's a person dying. Like, like that's and I, we know that's that's a famous saying from your thing, but it's not like "Where's the beef?" It's like "I've fallen and I can't get up." That's not I've fallen. Yeah. I don't, it's a, I'm you're, dying. You're, like, like you're, trademark. You're, you're trademarking the most common thing you hear if you're a 911 dispatcher. Yeah, like, like, I don't know. I don't know what's funny about it. I know it's just funny. It's like tr the opposite of trademarking the birthday song. But we started joking about how I should get one of those because I'm 12 years older than her. And then the joke turned into sincere. Like, you could, if you got one, it might help. Those, like, <laughs> <laughs> those commercials are so existentially horrifying. There's a... A line in one of those commercials, this old lady says, I live alone and I don't get many visitors. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst, it's so worst way to end up. Well, we're born into these bodies and then we're like, like a whole, so you use a brain and then there's a puppet and the puppet's made of meat and then there's, yeah. a, there's maybe a God or maybe there isn't or somewhere, somewhere in between. No idea what's gonna happen when we die. We just know that it's gonna be a drag when we do. It's not gonna be fun. No one ever has fun when they die. Nobody. Oh, I, I know. I, I, I know. I know. Steve Jobs said, "Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa," or wow. whatever. But I think I think he was like, "Oh, whoa, this hurts," <laughs> like or wow or yeah. We, we don't. I I don't think. I think. I don't think death is that bad a thing at all. The, Dang, that's what I'm fishing for. My recent running with cancer <laughs> made me think that it's. It's not, well, for one, the one thing you realize is that this is not new terrain. Like, you realize there's this well-worn path into oblivion that they've worked out for us already. <laughs> like, like other humans, or? For humans, yeah, like just the medical system. I mean, dying is so good these days. The drugs are so good, <laughs> man. The narcotics are incredible. You're gonna, you, he, Steve Jobs said, wow, 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 because he was on Dilaudid and narcotics. And then he, and then maybe he saw God or something, but there's this thing Ram Dass says, uh, which I've thought about a lot, uh, which is, he says, uh, dying is safe. 
And it's, it is, it's like the, the, a very safe thing. It's the most normal thing that can happen out, outside of being born. That is true, because like rocks are dead. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> Like aluminum yeah. is dead, it's the most abundant element in the Earth's crust. Yeah. It's like pretty no big deal to be dead. Yeah. It yeah. isn't a big it isn't a big deal. It's a I mean, thank goodness we It's as easy as falling off a log in a very specific angle that, will, that snaps your neck. It's preferable to living forever. Yeah. Probably. Because forever would be yeah, there is no I mean it's, 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 it's one of those things that like, like, like we always, you know, everybody in this room is at least 25 or whatever, they've all been down this road of like, okay, yeah, 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 because uh, you're a human being, so if life wasn't scarce, then it wouldn't be valuable and you wouldn't enjoy it and all that stuff. And it's like, it's one of those things like when your mom says, oh, those guys that beat you up shouldn't be your friends anyway. Like, like you, you hear it, but hearing it and understanding it are separate from like realizing it in well, your heart. Yes, that's like, under true. Like, like really getting it. Uh, like, like, like that whole concept of like, well, you're alive and you're gonna die and, and it sucks that you're gonna die, but because it sucks that you're gonna die, your life is valuable. Otherwise it wouldn't be, because you'd just be hanging out. Like, you'd just be like Highlander, like, like Worse, fucking around. The sun's gonna supernova. You're gonna be floating through the void of space, screaming for infinity, like one of those probes. Well, if like you're you immortal, so does that count so that you would do the sun with supernova and you'd just be a dude floating around? Where are you yeah. gonna stand? I don't know. So you'd just be. <laughs> yeah, our, 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 our sun would red giant first and envelop us. We'd all, we'd all cook. You'd have to be on a ship, right? I'm you'd assuming have... you're immortal and you have, like, your skin doesn't burn. Right, up. it doesn't so burn. So I'm just imagining. So you just hang out. You're just, it's the ultimate horror would be to be a mortal. <laughs> and then you're just, hey, you're just standing in space like Space Ghost. <laughs> yeah. like, like, waiting for, all right. And then you start walking like in Minecraft like there's just no end. Like, like you're just like, I don't know when I'm ever going to find another planet. And then when you do, everyone's like, hey, who are you? And you're like, my name's Ted. And uh, I can't die. And they're like, fuck you. No, you don't say, you don't say anything. When you run You antique, open an antique store. After six <laughs> No, they, and you they, wear a trench coat. No, you they, they, walk around New York being bitter. They start a religion about you. You be, you become a shitty deity. And you'd be over it. You'd hate it. Yeah. Like everything would be. Yeah. Nothing would be exciting. You'd never be able to love anyone. Well, because... this is the Alan Watts idea where he says, if you live forever, you would try everything that you could try, till eventually, if you were God, you'd be like, oh, I wonder what it's like to be mortal. And that's when you pop into this body and become Dan Harmon. Huh. Or Highlander. That, or Highlander. <laughs> but that is the that's the idea is that that we're sort of like the way we have to sleep, uh, or we'll go crazy. In the same way, like we're what happens when God falls asleep. We think that we're impermanent mortal beings because the state of pure immortality for eternity, there's nothing more horrifying and claustrophobic. So we're kind of what happens when God has a nervous breakdown and shatters into an infinite number of no. minutes of consciousness. Yeah. That, that, that's in, in, the, in the beginning, there was nothing, and then nothing is fucking dumb, and, and it has forever to be something. Yes. So it did, because otherwise it would have gone nuts. And what and did. did so it's split into Duncan Trussell and Dan Harmon and yeah. Spencer and Jeff and uh, and maybe a little bit of Adam uh, Goldberg <laughs> uh, and, and and it just like looks we just look at ourselves it's just a, it's just God like rubbing himself in a mirror like, like, yeah like, yeah I look good in this sailor outfit <laughs> oh yeah and, like every every person's a little finger and like yeah kind but of then like, but then the, uh, the merciful God uh, Bob Goldthwait of eternity comes and just shoes you off into nothingness again I'm afraid he's gonna bounce me. Uh, uh, I never knew the mayor McCheese had like I never thought of him as a mayor. Like it really is. He has power. Give us something. Ronald, 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 Ronald's in charge. No. Fucking mayor McCheese. There's a mayor. Ronald's a clown. We, people need to look into this. <laughs> Ronald's a fucking clown. He's like a like a tool of the state. <laughs> Mary McCheese is like, he barely says anything. Yeah. He's like, I got uh, shit to do. Yeah, he's like Dick Cheney he's sitting yeah, in the yeah. back going, I don't want to be president. I don't care. Okay, fuck, I got a big dick and a fucking missile for a heart. <laughs> uh, talk about your balls. Talk about the. Talk about, talk a little bit about, like, 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 like everyone in this room, uh, or at least half of us, are at risk of testicular cancer. Yeah. Is that the specific, uh, kind of, is that what you got? Yes, yeah, so I got testicular cancer. Yeah, it's, it's called... How did you find out? What is that? Oh. Testicular! <laughs> I, 
I just thought... It's gonna be a good time in the Egyptian Talk about the cancer in your bones It's gonna claim a song If it's not on your prostate, it'll be your nuts Fellas I'm sorry, Duncan, that was not fair No, that was awesome! I, I just thought you were gonna talk about your balls We put on some sexy music How do you find out? Well... They tell you to check in the shower I never know what that means No, you, you know... This is the funny thing. I, ch I check in the shower every time I go to the shower. I don't know that I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. <laughs> that was so stupid. <laughs> Are you just saying I I'm love saying, jerking off in the shower? I, I, I jerk off in the shower a lot. But when you check out, you don't too, rub your I balls like it's yes, squeeze them like Play-Doh. I do. Like, no one I, does that. I, I, you, you don't know that. <laughs> I love rubbing my, squeezing my balls. <laughs> I'm getting such a hard time squeezing my balls. Anyways. Can you come from rubbing your balls? <laughs> can, can you? Yes! No, I can't. Uh, yes, you can. I think it would take like eight years. <laughs> you know, like, you know, just watching like Shakespeare in Love and kind of just such a slow build that... Uh, you have to have an imagination. <laughs> if you were immortal floating through space forever, how many times do you think you'd jerk off? You just jerk off all the time, right? Yeah. Like, like, like that's all you'd do. You'd like fuck nebulae. <laughs> like rub cosmic dust on your nipples. And... <laughs> all right, so cancer. <laughs> So how do you find out? Do you do you feel a pain? Do you feel a lump? Do you no? Uh, one of your balls you? just gets really big. It's not really? a, a, every like got like a, a lot of a concern that people have expressed it, behind it is just this terror. Right. Uh, then they're like, now how did you know? What was it like? Yeah. Because you know balls are 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 weird anyway. So it's hard to tell if your balls are okay no matter what, because they're always wrong. Yeah, so what, yeah, what, what have they ever done that looks normal? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever laid in bed and watched them like fucking move terrible. around? Terrible. A, 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 adjust to the temperature? Like, like, I, I, I was like, does it, this happens to everyone, right? Like, are my balls a snail? What is, this is amazing. They're just like, like, like moving like lava. This one goes out to the ladies in the house. Balls move. You better get used to it. You think it's fun and games to play with them, but there's a lot more to them. They're pretty gross and weird. Uh, so yeah, they're weird, and then they dangle, and then they don't dangle, and then they, 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 they one's lower and one's higher. And, and always I'm afraid they go like the doctors go like, all right, check your balls when you're in the shower, just squeeze them around. Like when you went to college, there were stickers on the uh, shower stall, like showing like diagrams. Like, I'm not gonna do that to my balls. <laughs> Me like fucking squeeze them. Like like they wanted you to squeeze them like a fucking like uh, like a, I don't know like a like a like a like a uh, like a uh, thing great. from the Discovery Store. I don't know like a, I'm trying to think of, like, like like fucking get in there. Yeah. Like that's gonna. I, I, Great, I don't have cancer, but I fucking mangled my... Yeah. I, no, it's... I'm it, holding my balls out of protection. <laughs> talking about it. All right. It's no, it was no mystery for me. It was like one of my balls was big. It mm. was like, this is definitely... And when you touched it, did it hurt? It didn't hurt. It was just, it was, it was weighty. It was like kind of cool. It was like, ah, look at this big ball. <laughs> <laughs> but you thought... Did your when did your mind did your mind immediately go okay? I'm My gonna, mind is always going to like God. This is what kills me. Yeah. So I immediately was like, oh, this is probably <laughs> what kills you. And then I Google searched, you know, the <sighs> symptoms and everything is cancer, cancer, cancer. And then I went to the doctor, and the doctor's like, yeah, this is cancer. You're. You did you cancer. did you Google on a Friday? And it always happens to me like I'll get a I'll like a lump on my neck or something, and then I'll Google lump on neck cancer. <laughs> Lo and behold. <laughs> Number one hit, lump on neck could mean you have cancer. And I'm like, oh shit, it's Friday, it's eight o'clock. I'll just sit here for the weekend with cancer. <laughs> cancer eraser on my neck. And then on Monday it falls off. I'm like, oh, I'm Polish. <laughs> She's a fucking skin tag. 
I'm like gross fucking Shrek. That's just have shit growing on me. I'm Ben Grimm. What are what is that? What that's are a, it's a Polish thing. They call them Polish moles. Like I, you get you get like skin Wait, tags. What? Skin what? tags. No shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like built, you know, random shit. Like polyps. Body. It's a Polish thing. Wow. It's kind of like a polyp, yeah. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Oh, hey Spencer. I, I, I went to do Spencer's theme so he could do like a, uh, like... Spencer, uh, I'm being attacked by a, uh, a growth, uh, a skin tag. Clawing feverishly at your neck, you try to remove the odd skin tab. A small square, maybe rounded oval of oddly colored flesh popping out of the side of your neck. Are you dying? Probably not, but it's weird. <laughs> Yeah. Nice! <laughs> it fails to save versus your shirt collar over a weekend of drinking and then just falls off. People tell you not to pick it because it might give you cancer. Uh, are, are you all in the clear now, Duncan? Statistically, I'm in the 95, 90 to... Well, it's like between 90... There's a 10% chance I'm still fucked. Basically, I what, don't do what, what does still fucked mean? That it goes to the other ball? Well, or? no. It's, the cool thing about testicular cancer and... The coolest <laughs> thing. The coolest thing. It's a very lazy, weak... It's like cancer with its ba a baseball cap on backwards cancer. <laughs> it's like a... It's, 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 like it's very, cancer that shows your balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not, not ambitious enough for your brain or your pancreas. So fucking, uh. It's a chest bumping, <laughs> mall shopping, uh, Universal City Walk kind of cancer. Yes, exactly. It'll, exactly. It'll broaden itself when Quentin Tarantino yeah. makes it. <laughs> I don't know what kind of cancer you got left. So I'll take the balls, man. Pick ball cancer if you get to pick. Pick ball cancer because it's the most curable kind, which is why everybody says check your balls because it's if if you catch it in time when lance armstrong caught it he was coughing up blood one of his balls was the size of an orange he just ignored it he ignored it because he was riding his bike and he was jacked up on awesome weird sports drugs like fuck it <laughs> and he was like i'm sure something i did has you know yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I ride a bike for a living that has to be related to that but it had gone into his brain, and, and they still cured it, which is why everyone says, check, check, because if you, ca if you catch it at the right time, like when I caught it, there's like a 95% cure rate with it. So it's- Guys, all the guys stand up and reach over, put your right hand out and reach over to your neighbor. <laughs> and we're gonna do, we're gonna do a ball- Save your neighbor's life. Ball check. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, yes. Do, do what the man next to you refuses to do for himself. <laughs> Just get in there and- like a keychain, like a car. Pretend you're like rocking a... your car. <laughs> That's what they want you to do. Save a Harmenian. Uh, fucking cancer. Fuck cancer. Yeah. I, I'm not taking a risky stance here. <laughs> but... Well, no. If you, I, I read this incredible thing that uh, cancer, they think, is like a primordial version of us or something. Like from way, way, way back in the distant, I don't know, like I just- Well, I guess because it's, because cancer is a, uh, uh, is a stutterer, uh, uh, it's, it's a society. Uh, can cancer is a, uh, is a cell that goes insane. Yeah. And doesn't, doesn't play on the same team as its fellow. It's Occupy Wall Street in your balls. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't, it, 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 it forgets that it's a part of a bone. Yeah. And just goes, I'm, I'm gonna try something new. <laughs> I'm just me. I'm yeah. Bane. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. The city of bone is now free. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's just a bone and then it just, yeah. Uh, and I guess that would be probably the precursor of you know, uh, multicellular life because right. tissue is cells knowing how to play on a team. And before that, we were unicellular organisms who just multiplied at all costs. So it is kind of ironic that like you, all these years later, these biological weapons called humanity, they, like, like these fucking giant brains that have turned wolves into chihuahuas uh, <laughs> and giraffes into uh, 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 curiosities um, uh, like, like, and, and, and fire into, uh, uh, you know, just more fire. But <laughs> I could go on and on. Uh, 
the, 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 we, 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 yeah, it's like all of a sudden in your nuts, like one little, like, like this thing from the year six billion, yeah. trillion BC goes like, surprise, good word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember your roots, motherfucker. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very strange disease. And it's very different. Every, every different, every type is like, so different that some of them should maybe have different names, which is why some respond to different types of chemo. This type that I have responds really well to radiation, which fucking sucks. So I don't wanna, I mean, I, but I wanna follow through this line because, okay, so you had, did you have the thing removed? You I had to get my, I mean, they, they, the doctor was so eager to chop off my balls. Once he found out I had it, he's like, we should do this on Tuesday. I went in. We should do this every week. <laughs> For we two have, weeks. We should have Bob Goldthwait come out. And, uh, yeah. So so yeah. They immediately they just go oh, fuck that. Get that. Get that out of there. Yeah. Here. We got to get you this out just of came here tonight from radiation. Well, not no. Ra my radiation ended on fr on Friday, but I, I'm I'm still super tired from it. Radiation is crazy. It's the most absurd. Insane. I felt like I was in a Fellini movie because <laughs> they put you in this like. Because they want you to feel safe, they design the radiation machine to look kind of sleek, like a Mercedes or something. It looks like really fancy, but it also looks like a transformer. It's like this living weird thing with arms that you have to lay in, and they put this steel cup over your balls, and you have to like push your cock into this steel cup, and you're laying in this most vulnerable way and they fucking play Celine Dion. No! <laughs> yeah. No! Yes, yes, this is like Jacob's Ladder level hell that's happening. You're in some kind of hell dimension. They build all that shit and they can't ask you what you want to hear? It, I, well, I, finally, eventually, I got them to play what I wanted to, but the, the first Cold time, you're just so horrified. Yeah, <laughs> That's actually the radiation. They shoot cold play into your <laughs> body and it kills <laughs> And your the cancer in your balls is like, I'm out of here, bro. I heard there's a corn concert in his lungs. <laughs> Spring break is over, man. Coldplay showed up. It's too fucking too thoughtful. Not enough rape. Uh uh, yeah, but, you know, yeah, every once in a while I'll just throw in the word rape to get your reaction. Uh, the, uh, but okay, can I ask what you actually, when you took control of the playlist, what did you? Sitar music. Oh, uh, okay, like Ravi Shankar? Yes, exactly. Yeah, awesome. that's what I had God on play. Damn it, I love you. Didn't work though. Nothing works. There's no good music for radiation. It didn't relax you, yeah. Not at all. You're still in a machine, and you're like, this, these things are spinning around you. I think that's, that's why they probably give you Celine Dion. Like, like you, you didn't like her anyway. We don't, we don't, we don't want to ruin your favorite band. Yes, for her. exactly. We're not going to be weird. Like, if Tori Amos is playing, I'm like, okay, well, that's it for this album. <laughs> Like, whether I whether I make it yeah, through yeah. or not, you don't get the kinks in there. You get you get some <laughs> yeah, your favorite songs are just scratched off your life forever. Like, it's like when you, when you get Lola, hello, I, I got food poisoning and had a falafel. Like you know, falafels were off the list for a long time. Yeah, 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 I can't drink gin. Yeah, you don't want don't take the kinks into your uh, testicle Rain, and radiation. No, <laughs> don't. And other life lessons. Um, well, thank God you're okay, Thanks. but they're going to tell you later. How, when, how, I'm sure it's all, I don't you know. You know, one of my know. friends said, like when I told him there's a 95% chance that I'm cured, he, he, he said, oh, well, that just means there's a 95% chance you're going to die of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Mel Brooks just called. Uh, he gave you 80% chance. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. a, that was uh, so, Sony told me when Community got picked up for its second season, they said, congratulations. Uh, now if you get canceled, you've wasted twice as much money. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> They're a good company. <laughs> Uh, they bring good things to slow death. Uh, the, uh, 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 but not to equate your balls with, uh, with Sony or anything. Um, the, uh, so, 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 all right, well, I don't know. God damn it. I mean, so it's all going to be, it's all a big haze. Like they're, the doctors are going to like let you know in the coming weeks. Well, or... no, I mean, I get C, I'm going to get CT, I get to look forward to CT scans like 
three times a year for the next four years. Oh, fuck, man. So just to make sure it hasn't spread. It sounds terrible, man, but like really once you get like the water thrown in your face, it's, it's, not, it's not bad at all. I like, kind of imagine it would recalibrate your life in a yeah. way that makes telling your landlord to fuck off easier. Easier, so easy, yeah. man. It, but that's where every, the, like we're all in the exact same boat. It's just I happen to, it is get weird. get like a, a first hand glimpse of mortality, yeah, but yeah. everyone's the same. Everyone should not be afraid of telling their landlord to fuck <laughs> off. You know, it, it's 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 a uh, you know you end up going deep into cliche land when you have cancer because everyone it's well dying is like this well trod path and everyone goes down. So the thing where they're like, man. I really like appreciate life now and like I'm so happy to be alive. All that stuff really happens, but you don't need cancer to 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 be happy about your life. You just need Celine Dion. <laughs> Duncan Trussell. Duncan Trussell, everyone. Thank you. Duncan Thank Trussell. You. Amanda Spackerman. Thanks. A Duncan Trussell. Yo. Yo, had a Duncan Trussell got a Duncan Trussell got a Duncan Trussell. I got a Kermit Frog feet on my bar stool. I'm a Muppet waving my feet. Duncan Trussell came up and his cancer was a treat. He treated you to the glimpse of the abyss. Fucked your mama so hard she started to piss into a cup and I drank that shit. And then I rubbed it on my face and their tits And then I put my little wiener in between those things And I said, fuck you, you I'm gonna make you sing And she said, la, 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 la Dan Harmon's fucking me I'm your mama Duncan Trussell, everyone that, I mean, what? Don't be jealous of him you can see how much I love him. I know. You, I, the first time you met him, you had this giant uh, kind of... I'm sure that happens to everybody. I, and actually, I've been told that that happens to everybody, and I get pissed at them. I go, fuck you. It's not it's special. Yeah, I, I, I met Duncan at a bar very briefly and said hello, and I, I loved him. He's a, he's a lovable guy. I mean, what are you... Yeah. What are we, what are we, what are we doing? Let's get out of here. Go hang out with Duncan Trussell. Uh, not until he plays some D&D, &D, though. Dungeons and Dragons! Go to be playing in the Egyptian... Where it was, <laughs> this is this is the place. This place was built to play Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, let's bring up our guests, uh, Dan. Uh, who, who, our VIP guests that 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 uh, supported this show and achieved the top tier prize of playing Dungeons and Dragons with us. Let's bring them up right now. Guys, come up. It's Sean. One of them is our old friend Sean Sakame. AKA Snap the Jack. The most offensive Twitter name in the world. Because apparently he's half Japanese, but he doesn't look yeah, Japanese really enough to have the name Snap the Jack on Twitter. And, yes, so Sean Sakami and Roy McClurg, everybody, the thousand dollar donators, holy shit. Discretionary money and no idea what to do with it. <laughs> but Roy, you're a. Uh, Let's get these guys some, uh, let's get these guys mic'd up. I got one on the floor. Ugh. Also, uh, I, I suppose, well, what we, what we, sh let's, let's, let's meet these two before we bring Aaron up. How about that? Yeah. Sean, you've been a, you've been a very uh, original, uh, like, long-time Harmontown fan. I have. Come, yeah. come forward. Step to the edge of the stage so folks can see you Sean all. is like the, uh, the Morgan... Wait, what's the what's the uh, what's the name of the? Well, I was gonna say Morgan Freeman, or uh, <laughs> but his character is Lucius Fox of uh, in the Batman universe of of of, of Harmontown. He's uh, there's always like a bottle of vodka backstage that nerd melts from Sean. Well, I mean, you give so much; it's only fair to get back. I, thank you, man, thank you, Sean. Thank you. Well, thank you. Man, thank you. And Roy, how do you come to uh, come to us? I flew from here from Dallas. Today, yeah, uh, we're we're uh, my wife and I. My wife, who is at the hotel right now, oh, she does not <laughs> like the show. I explained the show to her, and she was a little taken aback by the fact that we're going to play D and D and talk about dicks. And so, 
And it cost a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe you oversold it. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Did she ever listen to it? Uh, I, made, I made her listen to one of them. Uh, which and, one? Uh, it doesn't matter. Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Oh, she didn't like that? There was raw emotion there. <laughs> no, she liked that part. Uh, but she didn't think it would happen tonight. So right. she, oh, she just. All right. No, well, she, she said, is it not, you know. What's no, her name? Penny. Penny. Give me a beat. Yeah, please, please. Awesome. Yo, 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 yo. I fucked Penny. I didn't do it many times. But I did it with rhymes. Put my wiener in her butt and my wiener in her mouth. East, west, north, Penny, north, south. I fucked Penny. I loved it. Penny, are you listening? No. That's why I fucked you. Fucked you. Fucked you. Fucked you. Fucked you. Doctor, doctor. All right. Wow. That was angrier than normal, Dan. It was angry. That that was misogyny factor nine. I don't like it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I. 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 Uh, I Did you I, take my drink? I may have. Yeah. I had I a did. drink just here. I'm sorry. I did warn her about that. About about Dan um, rap fucking her. Yes. Yeah. How are we doing on time? We got three apparently hours. She three hours with, three apparently hours? she was good. Apparently she was good with it. Yeah, well, do we have to be out here by a specific time? Do we care? Yeah, the uh, the master is playing uh, at 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, guys, have a seat. Let's, let's bring Aaron McGaffey to the space, stage as well. Space ball, space ball. <laughs> Aaron McGaffey. You said Roy, it's Roy, right? Yeah, you said right. you were in town for the Grammys, right? Yes, sir. What, 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 why? What, what? Because my wife, who's not here, yeah, bid on a big auction item last year to go to the Grammys. It was just like a Jesus Christ in heaven. Hello. Like, like, just a, so she's not. Uh, she's a slave. <laughs> she bid on an auction item that resulted in her like, like, like she, she, she kind of won a contest or like an yeah. auction item like for a charity. Yeah, for a charity. Like, like, like for uh, testicular Grammy, cancer. Grammy Foundation. One, one, two, two. Thank two, you, Spencer. Check one, two. Overqualified for that job. So then you get to go to the Grammys. Do you get good seats, or do they do they sit you in the back? I think we have good seats. I think. I'm not sure. Thank hey you. guys. Hello, Aaron. Hey. I, uh, I I want to. You, you were you were talking to Bob earlier about our fight in the uh, hotel room. <laughs> and uh, first of all, such a huge fan of yours. Would have. So excited when when you were in Atlanta and really wanted to meet you and missed you because I was doing merchandise, and then <laughs> Dan and I got in this terrible fight, which we talked the, the fight that we described. Now our fights are like little babies that we created along the road. The fight that we described at the Arlington podcast, which led to Pittsburgh, was that fight. And Dan uh, said a lot of things to me and left the room, and I was shaking and crying. And then I got a text from him that was like, "Hey, I'm hanging out with uh, with with Bob uh, Goldthwait across the street or across the the across hall." The hall. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted to go so badly, but I looked like uh, an octopus that had been run, run over. I was covered in tears and it was a big mess. That's what I do. That's how I abuse you. I'm like, you're <laughs> I nothing. know you're a big you're fan a piece of comedy. Of shit. You're a big piece of shit. Hey, Richard Dawson, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out. Family feud, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Wish you were here, biatch. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm also embarrassed that you that you heard uh, our fight. I don't know. It, I, like, I wonder what he heard. I mean, I guess so. <laughs> this was our fight that we had about um, me offering you a ride in a van and you getting upset about that. So right. a lot of a lot of van talk. I just do a lot and of a lot like... of you're welcome that I brought you on the tour talk. Right. Well, because so, the cycle that you and I get into is when like you feel disrespected by me and then you go. Uh, oh, uh, you, you... Pittsburgh too. You don't appreciate me, and then I go, I don't appreciate you? Well, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Fuck you! Uh, I've, I've appreciated you so much, you don't even know. <laughs> we have a lot of fun, you guys. You have to make it I let fun. you breathe at night. I don't <laughs> strangle you to death. I let you breathe at night. You're welcome. <laughs> Your throat's just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> you won the lottery with me. <laughs> An animal would kill you. <laughs> I mean, uh, for, for all your talk of uh, you being an abusive boyfriend, 
Uh, we really are uh, best friends, and I'm a crazy person. I'm not a, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fine. I'm saying this to Bob. Um, <laughs> we're best friends. <laughs> this feels terrible. Oh, thank Bob, you. Bob, is strangling, Bob is actually strangling his wife over here. Oh my God. No. Can, we, can we get a spotlight over here? Okay. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so bad because I, I have, a, I have a, a podcast about relationships and I get on my high horse frequently about what's healthy and what's not. And, and <laughs> yeah. do, you, uh, do you still want to move in with me? Yes. All right, let's, let's move in together. There, we did it. Wow. We created a story. Don't you guys already live together, though? Basically. <laughs> you, you've been to her apartment one time, right? I've been, yeah. Literally, he slept over one time. Yeah, yeah that's it's a, okay. That's, that's hard. <laughs> also, guys, we have a big announcement. We are getting a puppy. puppy. <laughs> Gross in the mouth. Also, I cut myself. A little triangle pattern. <laughs> I just I carved Dan into my thighs. <laughs> when you laugh, it makes me think that you kind of think that that could be true, but it's, it's not, not remotely, not remotely. All right. Spencer, you got you, did you give characters to? Oh, wait, you guys, what are you standing characters. there? You're like, like, yeah, like, come back on a bus no, stop. No, no, here. No, no. No, no, sit. no. So, yeah. Roy, sit on me. No, you guys got to sit. Yeah. You sit guys. Harmon, Harmon, you can stand and stock the stage. Exactly, like, exactly. Like, 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 the, like the second level mage that you are. Sit like the gods you are <laughs> with the Egyptian. Uh, All right, so uh, Spencer, you have a, a tall task in front of you now. You've got two more characters on the stage. That's cool. If you don't mind, uh, br bring us up to, stay, uh, up, up to date on our campaign. Are you going to music or...? <laughs> on the Not if you're going to be no. a dick about it. Well, okay. I have the volume down, okay? I'm sorry. Not possible. All right. All right. Do you want me to distribute the sheets first or at the same time as talking? I got it, man. All right, well, that one's yours, man. Do you need anything? Oh, These are, this is, this is your new spell list. Um, that's yours. We have our Yeah, that's the adventure. This is great podcast talk. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like at the end we're going to fight a war. Uh, well, you can't read. <laughs> it doesn't say that. All right, Spencer, take it away. On the last episode, our heroes had been trapped within the deep and mystical Magical Finifish for what seemed like an eternity. I'm sorry. Mystical. I'm sorry, yeah. what? Mystical Chasms. <laughs> Who can't read now? This guy. Right here. Who's got 20 sided die and can't read? I can't do math either. I'm right, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I, I'm gonna miss my musical cue this time. No, after, no, you still got it. After meeting with a village of fish dwelling humans and a master swordsman named Valison, our heroes found and destroyed various organs in a quest to escape their living prison. Slipping down a slippery flight, they found a magical tome before coming on one of the beast's great hearts. After a long fight, the gang was on the ropes. Just when they thought all hope was lost, a long lost ally reappeared. Tylenol with codeine! With the aid of the mystical unicorn, the party was able to destroy the beast's heart. When the heart defeated, the great beast fell out of the sky, crashing to earth with a catastrophic crash, a catastrophic crash, and a sickening splat. You feel yourselves being flung into the wall, and all the flesh in the chamber convulses, expanding and trapping you within its great bulk. You feel your bodies being squeezed, compressed, crushed, perhaps by feedback and the squelch of liquefying tissues. Its side bursts open and your party is squirted out in a bolus of fleshy bits, slimy fluids, and bloody chunks. You land unceremoniously in a heap. Spencer! Yeah. You, were, you were only three seconds over, but that was my fault. That was my fault. Yep. <laughs> that is some real dungeon mastering. So are we on the ground? You're on the ground in a big pile of each other, and you're you're full of you're you're swimming in fish fluids. It's just gross. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Oh, Sharpie. Oh, Moraine. You, well, have, you have viscera in your hair. Oh, <laughs> it's a 
embarrassing. Hey, why, why, like don't you, why don't you guys move in, to, to move in together and get a puppy? <laughs> Maybe one day we will, little man, when we've finished our journeys and settled down. But what are we really questing for? We've been doing this for so long. Well, what, what is it that we're really going after? We got swallowed by the InfiniFish. I know. And then uh, that way laid us from the task of going to rescue my father, I think. Yeah. So can we still rescue your father, Sharpie? We could. I mean, I've never liked him, but I've always wanted his approval. I feel like I got that. Right. So we could let him die. Yeah, you, you guys found closure there, I think. If fathers are only good for approval, after that, like, what are they doing? They're not, they, 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 their job is done when they come, right? Tech, in the most technical terms. Like, like, like they don't, they're not mothers, they don't nurse you, they don't, they don't you know? No, my, my father taught me how to wear a breastplate and swing a sword. Well, maybe we should go hang out with him. <laughs> Yeah, I care about them, I guess. Well, why don't we explore our surroundings? You explore your surroundings. <laughs> I should say, um, after defeating the great InfiniFish, you feel a, a lot wiser and stronger as a result. Uh -oh. What? Uh oh. You, oh, shit. You level up. Level Bob Goldthwait doesn't know what's going on. But he's here, but he stayed, and he's not going away. He might soon. And now we insane. called him out on it. Now I feel obligated. Please feel obligated. So are we level three now, Spencer? You're level four at this point. Four? Holy smoke! That is crazy. Yeah, Wait, man. Do I have an animal yet? Um, as it happens, at level four, you gain an animal companion. Yes, uh, please. What kind of what kind of companion do you want? Oh, I didn't know a you puppy. got to choose. <laughs> um, God, I I don't I don't want to be Meg Ryan, but what are my options? Give me just uh, just a little seconds here. Be, uh, when Harry met Sally, it doesn't really work because she was just refining her order. I'm sorry. She's, uh, she's famous be, uh, for option exploration. <laughs> um, she's I'll very particular. She's, she's, she's very particular. Um, can I, is there a I'm going to shoot off some animals. Can I have a, can Badger, I have a camel, dire rat, dog, riding dog, eagle, hawk, horse, uh, owl, pony, snake, wolf. I'm a woman, horse. Okay. Horse? Horse, so I can... Horse. Be, ride the horse. Horse. Well, a horse trots up to you out of nowhere. Is it... Be, what color is it? It's... Uh, what color do you want it to be? Your animal companion. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Holy shit. <laughs> uh, um, it's uh, brown. Chocolate. There you go. <laughs> It approaches you with a knowing look in its eye. It seems to say, My name is Coco. Let's companionate. <laughs> and that too. Oh, she could say it all. More you. you determine. Oh, uh, hi, Coco. We, we nuzzle. You nuzzle. <laughs> I'm so happy. Nice. <laughs> you can leave me here in this viscera. I'm done. <laughs> The sky as this world is tinged with purple and swaying orbs of orange light that seem far off bob and weave slightly in the twilight expanse of the sky. Large trees cover all you can see aside from the massive bulk of the affinifish whose body has decimated a wide swath of trees that it must have fell upon. The body of the fish stretches upwards about 20 feet higher than even the tallest of the trees. The split in its side is massive and seems to be a mortal wound. The body is iridescent and blotchy and it seems more like an eel than a true fish. You can see the occasional twitch or stir ripple across its mass. The body stretches onward in both directions. What's happening? What am I not seeing? No, just... As far as you can see, and almost certainly fire. This wilderness landscape is very foreign to you. It must be on another planet or plane or something along those lines. From far off, you can hear the occasional roar and screech of beasts, but then you hear shouting from far off and the sounds of branches and twigs breaking. Two people are approaching. Two people. Who goes there? I am sure if he butts a lot. Uh, I'm done talking. <laughs> I'm Moraine Sedona. I have arrows and I shoot them. <laughs> they, they, they might be friends. That's true. Ooh, but we're, we're, out, we're playing this game of presenting ourselves. Oh, 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 oh you, you, you weren't shooting the arrows at them. No, no, I was just saying I have. I oh, have that was a I brief introduction. Oh. What, what, what the hell did you do to our Infinifish? You killed our Infinifish!
Infinifish. That was our Infinifish. Oh, oh shit. Oh, right. We've raised him since he was a Finifish. <laughs> since he was a Finifish. Shut up, babe. Uh, uh, wow. Well, we, we, was we were so stuck funny. inside him, and it was there was you know we couldn't get out. Wait, this was your Infinifish. Not a year, not a urine infinifish, but an infinifish. You you raise the infinish. You know your fish was swallowing people. Yeah, but we were stuck where we are now, and that's the only way we could get out. We were transported to a place by a wizard who ended up dying and yeah. left us here. The infinifish was our only way out. Oh, who are you? What are you? Um, I'm a rogue. I did you guys no come name. up with names? I got your names right here. Oh, go ahead. The pair introduces themselves. The larger one is a half-orc, perhaps wearing heavy armor. Definitely wearing heavy armor. What am I talking about? He Sean, Sean pointed at Roy wait, when wait, you wait. said the larger one. Yeah, he's the, he's the half-orc. We determined oh, okay. it randomly. I thought... I thought With a dice roll. Sean is the half-orc? Yep, a half-orc uh, battle cleric by the name of Slab Squat Thrust. What? <laughs> wait, that's Roy or Sean? That's Roy. That's me. Okay. Sean goes by the name of Stump Junkman. <laughs> Stump, stump, what? Stump, stump Junkman. Stump Junkman. <laughs> right. This is also a star of Gonzo Porn. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mystery science theater, 3,000 reference. Oh. All right. I apologize. Well, you guys are standing. Well, wait, uh, so wait, you guys, you guys raised a giant people-devouring fish to get off of this planet? Or they're liars. <laughs> because the, there were people on inside that fish that were stuck there forever. I think they might have been improvising. We didn't care bit. about them. Like, our, our fish was the only way that we could get out from where we were. It, it's unfortunate that it swallowed you. I do apologize for that. But defend yourselves. You killed our fish. Oh, shit! Oh, they're gonna fight us! Combat! I have arrows! <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I'm a coward. <laughs> I have, I have, I have gotten this far avoiding uh, all Sharpie, harm. Don't sell yourself short. Over the course of this journey, you have changed. You've become stronger. And don't you have a hawk? Hawk, attack their faces! No, no, I'm kidding. I, 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 th I think that they're, they're wanting to attack us, and they're, they're bad. Yeah, do you guys want to attack? I, well, I'm Four? saying to them, don't, let's not fight. Like, do they still want to fight? So, ask them. Also, do, audience, do you want something to happen? I command, like, I command, you, you like us. We like you? Oh, yeah. Well, Casting his arms about in a magical manner, he casts the spell command while uttering the command like. <laughs> uh, hey. Pick a target, uh, Roy. That's one of them threes. Thank you. Pick, pick a target. Uh, cast it on uh, Sharpie. Yeah, Sharpie, you feel compelled to like this person. I mean, I already Which did. Which is weird because he's the one that wants to attack you. <laughs> you, you I still want to attack! There you go, he's liking you. Well, how does that make you feel? Probably liked. This guy's all right. Uh, gentlemen, are, are you wishing to destroy us? I'm sorry that we're talking about this for so long, but... Uh, Maybe we got off on the wrong foot. So you like us? I'm still unclear. I'm a rogue scoundrel, so if you like my friend, by proxy, I like you. <laughs> All right, uh... Well, uh, what's, uh, what's, uh, anything fun to do on this planet? You guys have a camp nearby that you've been staying at. Let's go check out that camp! We check out the camp. I love it. Love this guy over here. <laughs> Wait, you only liked him a couple seconds ago. Has this gone to love? <laughs> did, did, did he cast Duncan Trussell on you? <laughs> I'm, I'm 40 years old. You know, clock's ticking. Gotta, <laughs> light's gonna turn to love faster than it did when I was 25. All right, we, 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 we run off to their camp. Uh, do you guys want to take them to your camp? Just to be sure. We will take them to our camp. Soon. I'm, I'm out my horse. So I, I, hold, I hold her mane like it's, she loves it. We ride. Upon the, the horse you ride. Everyone loves it. <laughs> Soon you're at a small camp. Large green canvas tents are pitched and a fire pit has been dug with skewered hunks of meat roasting over the flames. A few rocks have been shaped into comfortable looking chairs. <laughs> this is our camp. Our camp is your camp. Welcome here. I sit comfortably in one of the rock chairs. Nice. 
Would you like some of the meat that we have grilling open, open over an open fire? Uh, really like roasting. Help yourself. Oh, thank you. It's very nice. Uh, this has been a weird day. <laughs> I have to say, you got you guys are handling the murder of your pet pretty well. So are you two together, or is there a? Yeah, what's your guys' story? Do, do, do you have, yeah, are there are there are there partners for us to meet? Is there a Mrs. Stompfrump? <laughs> Our relationship is strictly platonic, for all intents and purposes. <laughs> is there anyone else on this camp? He said plutonic. Yeah, that means super gay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's I mean, like the it's furthest alive, planet. Like like it's all yeah. the way up the butt. Shout Guilty. out to Penny. He needs to say platonic. I've told you that a million times. I'm oh, they're adorable. I, know. I like these guys. <laughs> you, so you guys, like you guys that. made all this furniture? He stands at a new finisher, right? <laughs> well, we bought it from Ikea. It was beautiful. Um. Well, well, tell, tell us, uh, every, every uh, person and creature in this land wants something. What do you two long for? What is, in what way is your life compass I'm so aimed? afraid to hear this. Before we get into that, I, I want to uh, extend the use of our cleaning area since you have plenty of fish guts all over you. Thank you. Clean yourself, oh, and then we will you. talk. Oh, there's a little hot tub over here. Thank yeah. you. I kind of like the shimmer of the the, sh the fish viscous, mm. so I'm gonna keep it on for a little while. I create water. Nice. What? Oh, <laughs> uh, what? Like, hey, everyone does. It's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. nothing to brag about. It's not a competition. Uh, uh, I have uh, good arrows. What, what, okay, fellas, hey. Where are we? Do we know where we are? Like, we're on like, an alien planet. I, mean, I, mean, I feel is, like they're hiding something. This, this camp it looks like it must have cost each of you a thousand dollars. Like, what do you guys want out of this? Spencer, I, I, I creep off. I hide behind Coco. They think that I'm brushing Coco, and then I just, I inch away, and I, 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 I poke around. Do I find anything? You find a dire badger. Cool. Lips pulled back and teeth bared. The bared it charges. I, I, I use my I, I use my power to uh, to talk to the animal. You don't know that's happening. She snuck away. Oh, I was talking about a squirrel I saw nearby. A squirrel approaches. I I, I take out one sleep arrow and I, I fire it at the badger. You fire it at the badger, right, as it's biting you in the leg. You take three damage, but uh, you, you strike the damage. badger with the arrow and it falls asleep. <laughs> Still three damage, though. Hey, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> uh, hey, guys, I come limping back. Uh, <laughs> the sleeping badger clenched to your leg. Sometimes I fancy myself a detective. Uh, I, I, I stirred up a badger, but gentlemen, Quark, Sharpie, these men have a dire badger. What kind of people have dire badgers? They live in an alien dimension. Okay, we can't ask you because you, a, cat, a spell is cast on you. Yeah, Quark, I like them. Quark, I, like, the, uh, I cast a level one cause fear on Maureen. Maureen. Oh, this guy is fickle. Titled to will save. So that, that just means I'm afraid? Yeah, you run screaming. Ah! Ah! I'm ah! sorry about her, guys. <laughs> it's uh, that time of the harvest. <laughs> Why don't you go talk to Bob? Go hang out, have him show your, you his trailer. I'll cry in the room. <laughs> I said that as a joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're spilling vodka all over your. You're spilling sheet. vodka all over. No, that's not that's not how I'm insults clumsy. work. Those are brand new sheets. Clumsy. I know. I'm sorry, Spencer. I apologize for a badger attacking you. Much much like us, it's stranded here in a in an unfamiliar realm. We are just trying to find our way back home. What is your home? I don't feel comfortable disclosing that information. <laughs> I know I just screamed and ran away, but I do not trust these guys. I like them. <laughs> Spencer, am I in the in the area? Um, let's see. Yeah, you recover from your panic and start to wander back. I ask, uh, I ask uh, Slab, uh, I said, you know, man, it's been a long fight in that Infinifish. I could really use a nice back rub. 
And <laughs> Jeff likes this settlement. <laughs> I cast hold person. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> You fail your save. Uh, you're stricken now. You can't move. You feel yourself being held as a person. In a, in a tender way? No, or a, in a, a sleep paralysis way. I, I go to sleep. No, well, I guess more of just a regular paralysis way. I, Spencer, I, I don't trust Do you want to fight him? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. All right. I, uh, yeah, I take... Two arrows! The arrows, I fire at them, and I, me and Coco scream, hey, Adventure! They're fighting, firing at them. Both of your arrows miss their mark and plant themselves deep within the earth. It's fine, because I have Coco. It's, so, you're trying you. to hurt us, are you? No. <laughs> this, whole, this whole thing has become like with uh, an shot. Andy Dick party. It's <laughs> <laughs> just a weird, random. People are pitching YouTube commercials. Uh, I inflict moderate wounds. All right, on who? All right. Oh, damn. Reaching out towards you, he attempts to touch you with his crackling with energy hand. Typical. <laughs> Very. Was it moderate wounds, you say? Awesome. Yeah. Just making sure I got the right spell, that's all you guys, don't worry about it. <laughs> he touches you lightly on the arm, but you feel intense pain. Uh, do something, uh. spread throughout your entire body. You uh, take 12 uh, damage. Uh, uh. Hey, take it easy, buddy, I, I like you. <laughs> what are you doing, you're burning my woman. I'm so, I'm so just He's starting to kill your buzz on that, that. You're not liking him as much as you were. Well, you, guys, you guys are getting creepy on us. Okay, I cure moderate wounds. <laughs> this guy is all over the shop. I like that. He's just... <laughs> he, gave me, he gave me the world's creepiest back rub. Now he's fucking fighting people, curing him. He's, he's like clever bot. It's he's just like, like <laughs> it's random. Are, are you off your medication? I love everyone. <laughs> you have a weird way of showing it. Mole Rain is healed to full health. Jesus. I, I apologize for my, my, fa my, my friend and my uh, traveling partner. As a sign of good faith, please take one of my two healing potions. <laughs> oh, see? <laughs> really? <laughs> Fine. Dude. All right. I'll take it, but also dumb. You have two. You should have given two. Well, <laughs> right. oh, with you constantly attacking, I might need to keep one just in case. You guys. I set their lives on fire. Their lives? <laughs> they're, they're handing us potions. I take, I take us. It's just sitting around a fire. <laughs> Everyone's just. Everybody's I lost their minds. That. That's the worst. I just tried to open up and get a back rub, and everyone's getting fucking gun shitty. People are doing poppers and. <laughs> wow. I tell everybody about my independent movie that I'm going to make and how great it's going to be and how you should all be in it. Um, I take it. I take my sword, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I try to hit their throats. What? Jesus Christ! <laughs> They're doing yeah. no harm. Anybody... They're not doing anything. <laughs> I don't trust them. Well, you holy fuck! So is that happening? <laughs> Guys, she's not with us. She's not with us. <laughs> You're paralyzed, Court. I want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, they, well, they, they tried to hurt me. There's some, there's this badger. I tried to slice you their throat. You keep shooting at him with shit. Pick a throat to slice. Um, slabs. Slab, what's your AC? Um, it should be like around 20. It's oh, well, now, now I feel bad about this. You can do it. Oh, wow. Can I use evasion? You slice your foot open. Oh. You're not rolling high tonight. I'm sorry. Uh, you take uh, uh, just three damage. That's not bad. <laughs> you look really embarrassed. You know, things happen. It doesn't even seem like an act of aggression. It just seems like a very confusing and uh, desperate maneuver. I, I'm I, a woman. Why do things? Let me get on my horse. I cure her light wounds. You cure her to full health. <laughs> I punch myself in the head three times. <laughs> you do that. You regain, you regain control of your body just All enough right. to punch yourself. I eat a tree. <laughs> I fucked no. the sleeping badger. It wakes up. Uh, I use my power to talk to the badger. Uh, 
and I said, Badger, can I, I pulled the Badger aside behind one of the, the roughly hewn, uh, attractive stone chairs, and I go, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Spencer, Spencer, horses are, are intuitive, right? They can tell if someone's a good person or a bad person. I'd say so. I, I go up to Coco and I say, Coco, baby. Spencer, what's, what are, what's the deal with these two fellows? Are they good or they bad? Spencer, what are we supposed to look at? What's up? What are we supposed to be looking for? I can explain it in a second. You just say defer to me, but let defer me take, to you. Okay, let me take care of these two actions. What's going on? What the badger's shit? like, hey man, this is like forest land. Uh, I don't know what it's called because I'm a badger. I don't name things, but it's like a forest. Uh, this whole thing is all forest. All I've seen is forest. Yeah, and no, I mean, like, do you know these guys? You hang out with these guys a lot? <laughs> no, I don't hang out with humans. I, I live with my animal friends, and sometimes we cavort and play, but we don't we don't talk to people unless they can talk to animals, which is, uh, which yo, is look, odd. So, uh, fuck it, I'm gonna hang out with you. These guys are freaking me out. All right, cut to uh, the, the horse. Uh, the, these guys are obviously very confused. They're out of <laughs> sorts. Um, they're not in their element. They aren't from here, so. so, so but, but Coco Baby, are they, are they evil? I can't, I can't say if they're evil. They don't seem evil, but they do seem jumpy and, and afraid. Coco. Easily agitatable. <laughs> All right, whatever you say is perfect. All right. Cut to the two adventurers who, uh, whose camp you're in start a, a lengthy monologue. Maybe not so lengthy. <laughs> One would hope. We're actually, uh, so... we, we've been searching for this, uh, this thing. It's called the soul of growth, you know? The soul of growth is what birthed the world tree, and the world tree, you know, created the entire plane of vibrance, and <laughs> from that came the material plane and all the plant life in it, and uh, it's a very powerful powerful thing. It's supposed to be here. Um, like, like I said before, that wizard dude, he, uh, he, he teleported us here, but uh, he got eaten by a dire wolverine. It wasn't fun. Um, Who's saying this? Uh, these guys are saying it. Oh. I have it written down. Well, I'm not looking at it written down, but I have it written down somewhere. You guys... So I command Sharpie to help us find the whatever the hell You're going to have to cut it down to a one-word answer. Or oh, okay. A one-word um, command. Like, help. Or hug. Or horse. Well, it fails to affect him, unfortunately. Uh, Damn it. You, you were told to help, but you don't necessarily feel compelled to. What kind of game are you trying to run on me, man? <laughs> Can I use my skill of diplomacy to try to aid, have them aid us in our quest? And oh, use yeah. your them? skill of explain a seed? <laughs> Yeah, man. Okay, the soul, the soul of growth. Just explained it. Um, looking sorry, for it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We got trapped on this plane. Now we don't know where the fuck to go. Um, you know. Let's go find the soul of growth. All right. We would appreciate your help, and in turn, we will help you on whatever quest we're on. We'd love to. Remember that crazy girl who looked just like me, who was trying to kill you? <laughs> she was the worst. She left. I'm here. I. Uh, I give bull strength to Mulray. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Your strength increases by five. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Roy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Shout out to Penner. That's right. Uh, I, 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 I jump on my horse. Actually, I'm, I'm just kidding, Penny. If you listen to this, that's a joke. <laughs> can, I, can I inquire as to what your quest is? What are you doing out here? I'm just hanging out with these two fuckers. We, uh, it's, th things have gotten pretty wild for a while. Uh, we, we want adventure and, uh, and, and, and fortune, right? Also, my dad yeah, is getting killed. Like, like, uh... <laughs> but but I, I like the sound of the soul of growth thing. It sounds like, you know, like, like maybe we're going to find something bigger than just, you know, uh, fortune. You know, maybe our, our souls can prosper through this. We can grow as people. As, that sounds as, great. Gentlemen, we... would, uh, new friends, would you like to ride on my horse with me? Yeah. Come on, this Coco. This like a good idea. When I'm she loves really it. Everyone, afraid everyone get on. Of, I'm really afraid of... <laughs> Horses. Yeah. Is, is everybody I'm talking mushrooms up here? <laughs> I thought it was just me. <laughs> you know, he has a talking dagger. That's true. I have a talking dagger. What's up? Yeah. Oh my god. Are you interested in that? Mm, not yet. Are you sure? Yeah. Right. Wait, what? <laughs> he wants me to steal your talking I, 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 The I, world's I, worst I, murder I, mystery I, night. <laughs> well, what lady? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Madame, Madame McCray, and I, uh, I run New Orleans. 
Uh, you run New Orleans? No, I run New Orleans. Uh, let's get some more ice. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these guys are going to try to rape and kill us on the road to the soul of growth. That's tree of soul. I caught a divine favor on... It's Quark. We can be on first... Quark, for, for, for first whatever, names. Quark. Yeah. Yeah. You are granted a divine favor, and you get the sense that if you attack something, you'd do a better job of it, as if you had the favor of the divine gods. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's, just, he's just going he's down his sheet, just like, <laughs> casting everything. Like, if you are a fucking wizard, you do that shit too. I am a wizard. <laughs> well, then do that. It's fun. Well, fine. I, I, Help a new man over here. I, I, All the ones I, with check marks. I, 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 ca I, ca I cast. I cast. Uh, I could inflict a whole shitload of wounds on you guys. I cast Mage Hand. You get the ability to teleport, or I mean, sorry, yeah, 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 move yeah. Light uh, objects. Yeah, sir. I use it to uh, lift a rock. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Whoa! Okay, wow. now I, uh, I, now get, I, I, I cast Ray of Frost on the rock. It is covered in a thin sheet of ice. It's yeah! Covered. Yeah! I use stone. All right, now I, now I cast Burning Hands on the frozen rock. <laughs> it cracks in half. <laughs> Let's fucking do this shit, bro! <laughs> The, the powers you've demonstrated can aid us on our quest, please. Not yeah, I, I used them. <laughs> I have to recharge. I use stone. I need a bowl of cereal and a. a I use stone dip. shape to make it a puppy. <laughs> the stone chair shapes ships into the shape of an adorable puppy. It's I cast great. hypnotism on the puppy. <laughs> the puppy, though shaped like a stone, I mean, though shaped like a puppy, is but a stone. I, I take two arrows and I Whatever. shoot them at the necks of the strangers because I realize I don't trust them. Jesus Christ, you cannot. One of them strikes directly into the throat. Well, pick, pick guys, are you doing each? I don't... How many times have they healed you now? <laughs> it's like you don't want to be loved. But they're not, they're not open about who they are. It's, it's disconcerting. We're you, so open you, as you, to who we are. You just told them you were somebody else earlier when you were behaving like an asshole. And then shot them in the neck with an arrow. <laughs> that was not me. I use my skill of listen to hear what Mulrain has to say. Oh. Damn. <laughs> I uh, use my... my I use my... Uh, uh, he's uh, loud. I use level three to cure serious wounds. You heal. You'll cure your I neck ca I cast jump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump just up in the air like Jack Nicholson and Wolf. Like, uh, just James Spader just to like, jump around. I was gonna jump around. Uh, I Why? eat 14 arrows. You get indigestion. <laughs> I march off alone in search of the soul of growth. <laughs> I, I would like to tag along with her. I'm and going to. No, 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 no. Fucking, anybody, anybody that wants to come along can come. <laughs> But let's fucking let's fucking set some ground rules here. Right. That guy. Fucking let's be let's be friends or let's fight. But let's fucking put your dick back in your pants or take it out. Don't create water all over each other. You're a bunch of fucking nut jobs. <laughs> fucking I've been standing around here and it's fucking crazy. I'm leaving. All right. You guys stay here and fucking punch each other and kiss each other and freeze rocks. I join. I'm trying to grow as a person. I joined him in ma magic vestment. Nice. Thank you. I'll take it. Later. As you leave, you feel your armor grow stronger. I appreciate that, whatever your name is. I'm leaving. Trot, 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 trot. I go running behind court. Oh, shit. Come on. Do you guys okay, want to go east, west, or south? Uh, east or west are along the side of the fish, and south is away from it. South. South. <laughs> All right, that's a good direction. So every, everybody's coming? Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, really, okay. I really could have used 10 minutes alone, but fine. <laughs> Cliffhanger! Cliffhanger! That's the end of That's, that's, that's all we Let's have Let's hear for Ryan and Sean, everybody. <laughs> Holy moly. First time D&D players, guys. Yeah. Hey, we all are. No, I don't think they did anything wrong. No, no, that was terrific. I enjoyed myself, and that's what matters. We had a... <laughs> It's not like we've ever had an expert G and G player up here. It's not like uh, just what, would that, what would that be yeah, like? Just to make sure. I was kidding. That was great. It was like going to the the, the weirdest 
bisexual bar in the middle of nowhere. It was, it, was, it was like so many encounters we had on the road, remember? Like he'd go to like Rhode yeah. Island and then somebody yeah. would buy you a drink and you didn't know, like, yeah. That was like no encounters that I had in the road. But you, 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 you were- Where were you, Jeff? Huh? I was alone. You were out there, after, after every show, Dan stood out there, and I, I, mean, I say this only so that you have to do it tonight as well. Dan stood and signed everybody's shit after, after, after the show. But this is too big a crowd. You can't do it tonight, can you? Uh, well, they probably don't need you there in Los Angeles, but I, I, I would do it anyway. I, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm not proud of myself for shaking everyone's hand and signing their shit. That would be a dumb thing to be proud of because it's not an accomplishment. I, I like, oh boy, that's so hard. It's like digging a ditch. No, but you show great interest what, in them. What, you what, became what, very fascinated. What I was proud of is the fact that my that I didn't. My instinct wasn't to go go fuck yourself. I'm tired. Like my instinct was. I'm proud of that. Like I remember when I. Uh, uh, there, uh, a guy, I, I was walking across the street with Sean McKenna in Milwaukee and, uh, and a motorcycle uh, uh, a rider had this horrible wreck and his leg flew off and, and, I, and I was like, I was running down to him and I tripped over his leg and it was like, oh shit, his leg's gone. And I, I was proud of the fact that I didn't like, I would always think on paper if you said, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna interact with a guy who lost his leg, that I would go, oh, I'll probably faint and I won't be able to help him. And I didn't help him, he died, but, but, but. <laughs> Do you want you want you want you want truth or do you want a story? <laughs> we want a story. I, I, I want a, a true story, preferably. He, he died a million years later. He died. He lived a full life. He had eight children. Uh, he didn't die. He didn't die there on the sidewalk. But I found out later that he died. But 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 the point is that I didn't I didn't I didn't like faint and become useless. I was, I I. I said, hey man, you okay? And called 911 <laughs> and put a blanket under his head because that's what heroes do. I would say on the road, like we, uh, Dan and I were both kind of concerned in the beginning that we would go off on, on the road and leave our little nest uh, at Meltdown Comics and wonder whether or not the crowds that would come and see us in Phoenix or Austin or, or Nashville or wherever would, uh, would get it or dig it or whatever. And what we found out was that it was really safe and really cool. And it's, it, it's, it's for me, I'm so happy to be back yeah. And just go back into Meltdown Comics and our, well, the cool our, thing our, about, our 50 loyalists that come in there every time. The cool it? thing about being back, this is the one thing that I learned. I don't think I, ch I don't know if I changed, but like, 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 the thing that, like, I was sitting in the back of a comic book store. We were doing the show. We're going to keep doing that every week because that's like therapy for me. 50 Whoa. people show up. Uh, weird thing to cheer, but that's, that's, and I also don't want to punish you for cheering. It's just, <laughs> just, just want to make you self-conscious about it. Um, the, 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 um, um, obviously, keep doing that. I was always happy to do that, but, but like, I, there was a voice in the back of my head going, like, oh, is this, are you regressing, like, into a cradle of comfort, like, so ever diminishing? Are you, is your world getting smaller and smaller by sitting in the back doing this ersatz Spalding Gray routine? Are you just, like, 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 like shrinking, shrinking and shrinking into a less and less of a person and just talking to the only people left that'll ever listen to you. And that, so that, I think that urge is like, get out there, go up, go, go try this bullshit in Phoenix and see if it plays, see if someone throws pudding at your face. And, uh, and then it was all this shit, it was like, like Pat Oswalt came up and he warned us like very justifiably. It was like, holy shit, you're going to Phoenix, it's gonna be all fucked up. The, 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 the podcast culture is such that what's happened is, like, in every city in, in, in the entire world, like, you can find, like, a hundred or more uh, of, the, of, of the people that you would want to hang out with. There is, so every city that we went to, it was all the same. It was a really it was, odd, like... A, they weren't, like, wearing different hats, like, I'm, I'm from Austin, so it's a cowboy hat. Like, it wasn't, they were just the same people. But I, I'm not saying it's to be kiss-ass or, you know, like, to blow smoke, but it was amazing and really... Uh, uh, reassuring was that the people that we meet are the same people that we fell in love with uh, here for our show. Is that incredibly uh, creative people come to the show? Like, like people kept like just like the, all the artwork and the gifts and the and the conversation. Yeah, they like, take you a napkin or a hat. Well, yeah, napkins, not that. People hard to like, make, it's just like it's it's it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very like it's a very cool like powerfully. They're creative. all writers. Like, like 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 there's got to be more writers per capita, uh, you know, in a in a Harmontown audience than anything. How, how many writers are out there tonight? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're not, a, they're not a group of people that likes to applaud themselves, uh, uh, but, but we'll, 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 we'll go with cockroach rules and assume that means most of you. Uh, there's 50 people clap, so there's 150 writers out there. 
for everyone you see, Jeff, uh, and, they're, and they're born pregnant. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, but but, but, the, but the, the cool thing is coming back, I feel like, like doing those shows in the back of Meltdown where we're gonna continue to do them, I do feel like, okay, having gone to like 20 cities in 23 days, what we learned is, no, it's not, it's, it's not necessarily an unhealthy thing I'm doing. Like I am like talking to people that are all out there. We, and everybody that came up to me and talked to me at all of these shows, they all had that thing in common. It was like all these little little nerds that like 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 we we we, we don't fit in and we just like but the there's nerds that turn that into anger and go like, well, I'm so fucking kill and murder everybody because I'm a nerd and I'm a kid, I'm gonna fucking strangle and show them what's what. And then there's nerds that are like, ah, god damn it, I just want I just want people to like me. I just wanna and I wanna like them. I wanna understand them. And if uh, you stand like like all these lines, like five thousand people, I think I probably like shook hands with and talked to, and it was all the same. Some of them can't make eye contact, and uh, most of them can't make eye contact, and I can't make eye contact. And it's just, yeah, it's, yeah, it's and I, I know you get this all the time, and I, I don't know, it's just really like the kind of thing. I really like it. I, 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 no, I, you don't have to tell me that. I'm just Dan Herman. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, can I get a picture? I don't know. Yeah, everyone can take a picture. No, I didn't mean that. It's your fault. I don't know how you're feeling. Okay. Um, and then, and then, there, 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 there was a kid that came to one show that was like, I just wanted to ask you uh, this thing on Reddit. Like, I asked you this question on Reddit, and then, and then, and then I noticed in season three of Community because I asked this question. Like, like then this other thing happened at Community. Like, w w was it me? Did I? Did I? Did I? Was it because of the question I asked? I just want to know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't I don't need it to be true, and I just want to know. And I was like, no, not really. I, I, just great minds think alike. You ask the question, whatever. And, and he's like, okay, all right, fine, 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 fine. And he's like, hey, do you want a, do you want a picture? Do you want an autograph or something? He's like, well, just, there's no purpose to autographs. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's right. He's right. There's no purpose to autographs. And I, I was like, well, what about a picture? And he's like, well, the picture is it's, 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 it's the same as a visual autograph. That's all it is. <laughs> And, and I said, well, we could make it a special picture. I could give you like a sensual picture. And he's like, I've seen the sensual pictures on Tumblr. I know, I know that. <laughs> like he, he called me and I was like, yeah, because 50% of the people are just to hug him. And that's, it's like, I'm saying it was there. I was like, okay, well, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, how do we make a picture special for you? And, and like, like, he was like, well, I'm coming, I'm, I'm coming to this show and then I'm coming to the Chicago show and then I'm coming to the other show. Like he was coming to three shows. I'm like, okay, well, like, let's take a, we took a picture. I was like, put your left foot out and then hold your finger up with one finger, and then in the next city, we'll hold two fingers. You'll have the only, oh, okay, all right, all right, right. Like, like the picture can be special. Um, what is my point of telling that story? Um, <laughs> like, 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 I had this conversation with Spencer on the bus, and the camera crews weren't there. It was like the director will blow his brains out when he hears yeah, about this. Yeah, it was good. Everyone was sleeping. The camera crew was sleeping. It was the most important scene in the documentary that'll never be seen. Everyone was sleeping. Everyone in the aliens ship was in hypersleep, and <laughs> and I woke up mysteriously because the bus wasn't moving, and we were the bus's oil oil was getting changed, and I walked out. We we're in the middle of the space station, and I walked randomly into this little thing, and Spencer was sitting there looking in, unexpectedly, like perfectly at home in a truck stop. When you actually look at him, he looks like you know, if you saw him in a truck stop, you would not you would not look twice. Little do you know, yeah. Uh, but but but, and then Spencer and I just talked for a while, and uh, we talked about autographs. We talked about pictures. We talked about weird things. Spencer's half my age, and it was just like I thought it was a very interesting conversation because you and I were talking to each other about 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 why is it what, what why do people why do people put importance on these things like 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 what is it about autographs souvenirs photographs all these rituals that we engage in that they they celebrate specialness oh shit bill murray's in an elevator i'll get a lock of his hair i'll have him sign a thing or i'll say something shitty to him so i have a story to tell my friends like you have this urge to make this moment special and I was like trying to, I was explaining to you, like, well, I think they, you know, people, yeah, that's what we have, this urge to make this moment special. And I feel like you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but at one point you were like, so you, so you want to understand them, like, like, like about normal people. <laughs> you were, you were like, so you, you, you like actually want to know how they think. And, and, and I, I was like, yeah, and I, like, like I, I'm obsessed with that. Like, I, I think that when you 
don't fit in, like you can react one of two different ways to that. And I, I had that conversation with you and I, I don't know, I know it was important, but I have no idea what the final verdict was or anything like that. And I know that you were affected by this journey and I, I, uh, I, I, I hope the movie's good. Um, and I yeah. hope that me babbling will uh, create some kind of... Uh, as an ending to the movie. Also, uh, we have, I think I was told there's gonna to be some visuals to go along with it too. Oh, damn. I'm supposed to point at the projectionist. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. We're not even gonna be performing, let's just watch. I mean, Dan, you can sing along and they can rap too. Across the country, <laughs> your mama's country. Sorry, I'm starting with. Alright, here we go. Harmonton. Harmonton. Where pee is yellow and the poop is brown. I fucked your mama till she was upside down. I Some people call me Pringles Dick, but I never really found out why. I don't really have a Pringles dick, I just keep my dick inside. I keep my dick inside a Pringles can because it keeps my penis safe and dry. Some people call me Pringles dick, but I never really found out. No, I never found out. I never really found out why. Ain't got a dick, ain't got a chicken noodle can. If you know it, sing it. All my life, I've been putting this can inside my chicken noodle wife. Chicken noodle guy come down from the mountains saying, Chicken noodle man, you gotta work all day. Chicken noodle man, you gotta cross the river Jordan. Feed the devil soup until your troubles go away. Soup to the bowl, bowl to the spoon. Spoon to the mouth, you're gonna get well soon. Gotta get some rest and sleep till noon. Drink a cup of coffee, then head to the saloon. Harmon Town, where pee is yellow and the poop is brown. What's your name? Hey, no, it's not. Work in the crowd in Harmon Town. Nice glasses, what's your name? Hey, my condolences. <laughs> What's your name? Brian. How do you know when you're finished? What's your name? Jennifer. No, it's not. Fuck you. <laughs> Work in the crowd. Nice shirt. Thank you. You're welcome, bitch. What's your name? Megan. Fuck you. <laughs> Work in the crowd. But I didn't ask. <laughs> What's your name? Eric. Psych. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> What's your name? More like Gary. What's your name? Your balls are hairy. What's your name? Fuck you. What's your name? Darren. Fuck you too. Fuck you all. You in learned nothing. Harmon Town. I fucked your mama in Harmon Town. Where pee is yellow and the poop is brown. Dan, I, re I realize now after watching this what you've learned. What? You've become a man of the people. Yeah. You've learned how to love. Yeah. I've learned how to close a show and talk to people. What's your What's your name? Tony. What's What's your biggest problem? What 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 Alcohol. Yeah! <laughs> Alcohol. Sorry, I, was, I, I didn't solve this problem. Shit, wait, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, you can't just ask sorry. him what it is. Sorry, sorry. You heard uh, alcohol and you ran towards the alcohol. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 I, I, I thought it was an idea. No, no, no. Alright, so what, you drink too much of it? Yeah. Uh, what happens when you drink too much of it? I get too awesome. Right! <laughs> I don't understand. How old are you? 30. Drink more! Everybody drink 
car Put every chemical you can in your brain Life is like a never-ending monotonous train And everything you put in your body only helps Because it's all bullshit, so kill yourself <laughs> Duncan Trussell has a cancerous nut And everybody's gonna die, so who gives a fuck? Embrace the darkness, embrace the light I am God of the Egyptian tonight Thank you everybody for coming I am King Tut Thank you I fucked your mom in the butt I nestled all your death nuts in my life I am Harmon Town This is a Harmon world The Harmon country swirled A Neapolitan milkshake Mark Marin and Bob Goldthwait and Duncan Trussell for coming. Palmer Town, I fucked your mama, tell me Palmer was brown. Let's do the woes. Whoa! Whoa! Fucked your mama, whoa! Let's do something so the people that leave left early to get parking, uh, um, to get to their cars. Let's do something. Let's do a secret track. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And anyone yeah. who knows the words, to get some, maybe get some yeah. girls to come up and yeah. sing. Grab some mics. Yeah. Girls who know the words of the chorus, come up on stage and grab a mic. Is Whitney Avalon here? Where's it Whitney Avalon? Up here. You know the words? She's a channel 101 or she sings. What's your name? Who's this? Stephanie, grab a mic, Stephanie. Let's get our female vocalist up there. All right. Yo, I'm freestyle rapping as a secret track. I fucked your mama so hard, I thought the bitch was black. I bent her over the city, she was urban. I fucked your mama so hard, I thought she had a turban. 9-11 is the place to be. It's a new thing to celebrate if you're with me. It's a terrorist anarchist excitement. I fucked your mama so hard, she needed a vitamin. Come on down. Town. Turn that frown upside down. Terrorism. Is yellow poop is brown. Come on down to Harmon Town. Al Qaeda is my brother's on the West Coast. I fucked your mama so hard I gave her a piece of toast. Said that's a grand slam and the moon's over ham. You gonna go in your mouth and make Miami better. I fucked your mama like cheddar. Put it all in her omelet and charge charged her even more. Give me a second. I fucked your mama. Just give me one second. Come on down to Harmon Town. Race. Turn that frown upside down. Black. This yellow poop is brown. White. Come on down to Harmon Town. Hot buttons, all the topics are exciting. Fuck your mama so hard. I swear the bitch just started biting. She was biting down on the bit like a horse. I fucked your mama so hard. She was blind and needed morse. Code to tell me to fuck her more. I fucked your mama all the way out the blind door. She had to go to a college for the deaf. I fucked her even harder so she kept G Cloud in her pussy musical pussy. I fucked your mama. Gary Busey. I fucked your mama so hard. Turn that frown upside down. Should have ended on the first one. Yeah. We should have ended on the first one. There's no way to pull out, man. There's no way. Jeff thinks I should have ended a time ago. Let's show this motherfucker how the raps flow and flow. I'm gonna rap even harder this time. I'm gonna pull out my mouth and put God's rhyme out of my mouth. Fuck you, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Come on down to Harvard Jack. Secret track. <laughs> Yeah. You guys should have all left. Content yeah, doesn't matter. It's all a secret. Come on down the hard Spencer! I'm on the top. Oh shit, what? Okay. Sorry, Spencer! I can't just start rapping at the time you ask. I don't just do any given task. I'm trying to rap, I'm trying to rap real hard. I'll just try rapping in my backyard. Everybody knows that I'm not the best, so let's see if I can put my skills to the test. I'm gonna start rapping and then go to the chorus. Let's see if we can go and get some more of this. That's all. Come on down, down. to Harmon Town. Dungeon Master. Turn that upside down. Dungeon Master. Please, yellow poop is brown. Ask Come on down, down to 
to Harmon Town. Scintillating lights going through the cosmos. I fucked your mama so hard she got even Johnny Most on her side from happy days. I fucked her so hard she turned grass into hay inside her stomach cause the bitch is a cow. And I went up to her and said, how? How do you do it? How do you change things to other things? She said, just stop rapping, start to sing. Come on down, 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 down. Well, I'll pull it up, I'll pull it up, I'll pull it up. Upside down. Fuck you guys. Wait, Dan, maybe, maybe you need a bigger mic. Use the big mic. Use the big mic. Spit the fire, cause my name is a motherfucker. I wanna fuck your mama like my name was Chris Chucker. I'm angry and urban, gonna do it right now. I wanna fuck your mama so hard to do it and how. I'm so angry, gonna burn down the White House. I'm gonna fuck your mama. I already rhymed that with mouse. Shit. Even angry guy can't, 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 can't really do it. Give me a second. All right, just give me a second. Turn that frown upside down. Sorry, Dan. Turn that frown upside down. Take, take, your down advice. take your own advice. Take your own advice. Happy place, breaking through to life. I fucked your mama so hard, every spoon was a knife. No more sharpness, only dull. I fucked your mama like my name was Martin Mull. I'm just, I'm just a regular guy, just making people laugh. I fucked your mama like my neck was a giraffe. I tried to elongate my life as long as I could. Just trying to fuck your mama like... And well, it's, just, it's not Price is Right. I just fucked up. I know wood rhymes with... Come on down to Harmon Town. Turn that frown upside down. Secret track. Gold Thwait. Secret track. Gold Thwait. Come on down to Harmon Town. Bob Goldthwaite stayed for the whole show. Directed Shakes the Clown. Now he doesn't know where to go. <laughs> Hanging out, being confused as hell. He wishes he could ring it and the fucking show bell. Just watching me and being confused. Poor Bob Goldthwait didn't know he'd be abused when he accepted my invitation to come. I really love his movies and he's my kind of mun. Sorry. Come on down to Harmon Town. Right. Turn that oh. frown come upside down. You got this? He is yeah. yellow, take it. Is Jeff, brown. take it. Me, come on yeah. down Jeff. to Harmon Jeff. Town. All right, Chef, well, thank you all for coming down to the Egyptian. I know that to most people in here, it defied all description. Uh, uh, Mark Maron, he left. We don't know where he went, but I would say that Mel Brooks will call the show 80%. Nice. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yo, 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 and I fucked her so hard she needed a bandana to make a tourniquet to stop the pussy bleeding. I'm so hard. I'm so sorry. I, 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 you should go home and be reading a book instead of listening. I, 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 I didn't mean for, for this to be Everybody, the Everybody, ending. Come uh, on down to Harmon's town. The place down a side. You get me out of Goldberg treatment. <laughs> Gold point, playing me off. Plug me in a jacket, now I'm going off. Thank you, Mayor McCheese. <laughs> Bob Goldwyn has called this match. We'll see you at Meltdown on Monday. Thank you guys for coming. What's the oh. oh. Dan Hogan! We're all going to. What a great, we're all going to a bar show. next door. What's it called? What's Thanks, the fucking name of the bar? Oh, go to the pig and whistle. We'll if go you to want. the pig and whistle. If you want stuff signed. Thank you so much. What's your name? Think. Jason. No, it's not. Jim Scampoli, yeah. David yep. Butler. Okay. Who else do I want to thank? Evan Scott, Brian Carmody, Brandon uh, Lilius, Dustin Marshall, Mor uh, Morgan Groby, Neil Berkeley, David Heyman, Alex Burton, Jason Yankel, our driver who's crazy, and Starbridge Industries. Thank you so much. We love you all. Let's all go across the street and have a drink, shall we? Was that show 11 hours long? Holy fuck. Good heavens. Oh, also, I didn't say Spencer Crittenden, everybody, won't you? Spencer. Dispenser. Dispenser of joy. 
Dispenser of women. Dan, stop. Spencer Crittenton is going pussy swimming. Dan. Gonna fuck every bitch Dan. from here to a mile. Dan, no. Spencer Crittenton deserves a smile. Dan, I'm the gonna rant the from the wings. So I'm going on the mic. Every I don't care what you motherfuckers like. I'm gonna rap till you leave. Gonna rap till you're sick. Gonna rap till your daddy refunds his dick. Cause he shouldn't have bought it. It wasn't worth much. I'm gonna fuck your daddy and your uncle, grandma, and such. I'm gonna fuck your whole family. Don't forget it. I'm gonna lick it and suck it and spit it. Gonna fuck your mama. Gonna fuck your grandma. I'm gonna do it. Banana Rama. Venus was her name. <laughs> Fucking's the game.